Very good morning, everyone. Myself, uh, Navajit Deka. I'm officiating as principal in the Government Art College, situated in Guwahati, the capital city of Assam. Uh, my college is the first visual institution in the Northeast India. It was established in 1947 and we are in the Platinum Jubilee year. I respected this in this case. Artists, scholars uh, from different countries, scholars and professors. So, I'm feeling extremely privileged to have here as a research question in the inaugural session of five days international multidisciplinary art workshop, which is titled as Cross Culture Identities Dialogue Through Art. I'm feeling a little uncertain uh, because I'm here at a very short notice of call from Director of Positive Energy Art Foundation. So, and as, a, as because of my busy schedule as the head of an institute, I had little time to devote on this topic, uh, but still, I have planned my lecture on the very topic of this event, the cross-cultural identities dialogue through art. So I shall be firstly deal with the topic of this event, then the relationship and interconnection of the key terms of the title that is culture, art, and identity, and a brief backdrop of the region where this workshop is undergoing, which will include the development of art, art form, and business. social, cultural, demographical similarities, and the uh, Connection, interconnection, the trans among the concerns of different constituent states. This northeast region was almost all the part of Assam, especially Meghalaya, Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland, and Mizoram were districts of. Greater Assam till the last uh, part of previous century. Thus, one of the constituent states of Northeast India, which is Arunachal Pradesh, that received its full statehood or independence in 1987, Meghalaya in 1973, Nagaland in 1963, and Mizoram in 1987. The other two constituent states, the Manipur and Tripura, were uh, originally princely states, which were uh, made first Indian territories and then uh, states of India. Thus, Manipur was a full fledged state in 1973 uh, 72, Tripura in 1975. This region shares international boundaries with uh, countries like Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar, China, and if you consider Sikkim, it's Nepal. 
So this region culturally a homogeneous yet perhaps the most heterogeneous region if you consider the demography uh, demographic profile, cultural profile of this region. This region actually is interesting that uh, it is said to be situated in a very ancient migration route through which different races crop migrated from different parts of the world. So, it was perhaps a commercial route in earlier time through which the mainland of India were connected with the Southeast Asia. We know that uh, even the Indian government now planning to open this route to Southeast Asia, to Northeast, uh, they are opening, uh, the, they have started the program, Lucas, and now they, that program has turned from into Actis. So uh, this uh, region is very vital from the point of view of culture and uh, economy and international relations. So uh, this region, I told that uh, this was a. Uh, you keep in the uh, second slide on me. I said that. Uh, I told that it is in a migration route. It is. It has uh, acted as a third row. Such assumptions are not uh, assumed assumption. This assumptions arises from the uh, classical sources such as periplus of Eritrean series of first century AD, then geography of Ptolemy of about 8150 that mentions probably of Assam and it's really uh, which is corroborated with other sources like uh, the source, uh, writings of Sankian or Yuan Chang. This region is said to be become the habitat of men from a very ancient period. And geological research of a kind that date uh, from tertiary period, the region was habitat of men. Scholars have identified four different migration routes through which uh, different racial stocks into this region. So we see that uh, in India, we see Negrito, Mediterranean, proto australoid Western Reticulous, Mongoloid, and Nordic racial groups. Altogether, six racial groups in Indian demographic profile. And in Northeast India, we see Negrito, proto australoid Mongoloid, Mediterranean, and Nordic occasion. So almost all the racial elements are present in the Northeast. Renowned Indologists, I'd like to quote Hale Bersan, is known for his study the wonder that was in you. He says, to quote, to this day, the land of Assam, because earlier the world of the region was uh, almost Assam. The land of Assam uh, contains many races of widely varying types and different stages of culture, which the blood of its people is no doubt a mixture of many diverse elements. Its beautiful valley have, a, have long been a meeting place of India, Tibet of Burma, and Austin people. From about the beginning of Christian era, and indeed a much earlier day, if we are to believe tradition, the land of Kamrupa, which was the uh, previous name of 
Ashwami. And the Brahmaputra River around Guwahati was the easternmost outpost of Hindu culture, which maintained a vigorous and independent political, social life and uh, resisting attacks of um, attacks from uh, Bengal and West, from the non-Aryan tribesmen of hills to the north, south, and east. So, with this, I'm coming to the three basic terms or uh, key terms of this uh, event. So these are some data uh, representing great from cultural uh, composition. It shows the uh, number of tribes living in the uh, in the northeastern states. But actually, uh, this number is officially uh, recognized number of tribes. But unofficially, it is more than that. So in official. Uh, record. It crosses 175. If we uh, go with the culture and the subtitle, it will be more than 300, I think. So let's move to the three key terms that culture, identity and art. So all these three terms are very loaded, but they are interconnected. First, the culture, which is a very important concept in the disciplines of anthropology, culture study, folklore, and uh, very difficult to define. But uh, if we have to define, we can use the definition of famous anthropologist E.B. Taylor, who says that culture is that complex one which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society. So culture includes uh, all the things human being acquired uh, as a social animal. Then a uh, British anthropologist Malinowski, it defines culture as an instrumental apparatus by which man is put in a position to better to cope up with the concrete specific problems that face him in his environment in the course of satisfaction of his need. While Clifford reads, it says culture is embodied and transmitted through symbol. So if we see the concept of Culture. It is a very uh, difficult concept which includes every aspect of human life, human uh, uh, acquired achievements or knowledge into its whole. The other term, identity, has also many connotations. Uh, whenever we speak of identities, it may be personal identities, it may be national identities, it may be cultural identities, it may be political identities. So, in that way also, identity is related with culture and art. The last term, the art, is perhaps the challenging one to define. In Indian, Indian scripture, it has told of 64 arts. And traditionally, the term includes both uh, performing and uh, literary art into its form. But uh, truly speaking, or strictly speaking, when you speak of uh, the term art, it refers to fine or visual art, which can be defined as, as aesthetic expression or creation using the creative skill and imagination. So. With this, I would like to uh, again come to this uh, region, Northeast India, and uh, I shall be presenting uh, some slides on the uh, 
the development of Venezuela in this region and some slides showing the relationship of uh, culture, art and identity. So I told about the prehistoric period. We know that the history of visual art developed uh, or traced back to the Paleolithic period when the, uh, the, uh, our ancestors started the journey of visual art in the caves through the paintings uh, today we call as cave painting. So in this region, they discovered some rudimentary traces of such paintings and carvings in some districts of uh, present-day uh, Meghalaya and Assam. So we can assume that uh, like the Altamira, like the Vimbedka of India, the journey of visual has started here in this region uh, in the pre-history period itself. Then, in the second phase, we get some legendary or uh, Puranic references of visual art in this region, which you can believe or may not. But there are references in uh, the epics like Ramayana, Mahabharata, about the prevalence of uh, painting in this region. Then the <coughs> historical references. If we speak of the historical references, which are believable, it starts with 5th century. From 5th century onwards, we get historical references of uh, the visual art. Uh, practices or visual art of North East, uh, India or especially the Assam or especially the Brahmaputra Valley which was the seat of ancient civilization. In earlier times the uh, Brahmaputra Valley uh, the civilization was known by different names uh, like Prabhupada and Pandu. So of the 5th century, in the 7th century, we have the uh, references of visual art in the Harsasari written by Ganavarta, where there is references of some gifts presented by uh, Kamrupati to the king of Kanan. So that can be regarded as an authentic document. In that document, it is mentioned that the Kamrupa king, he presented painting, brush, color, etc. to Kano's king. That means at that period, there was tradition of painting and the painting which were created in this region was highly coveted and appreciated. Then we get the historical dynasties and uh, through historical dynasties we reach the modern period. So I shall be covering up to the coming of British because from then onwards we see gradual emergence of what is called the modernity in the art. In the world scenario, if we look perhaps the modernism started with impressionism or cubism then we get uh, the modern moments and postmodern moments. If we go through the journey of the art of this region, you will, I think, uh, 
you'll be as soon as to see super works which represents the very aesthetic basis of those modern or contemporary art. We go a little back, what some slides back. And back. Okay. So this slide shows the development of uh, the dynasties and uh, visual arts. So next slide. Next. So this is uh, the famous uh, Kamakya Temple which is excellent example of architecture and sculpture in this region and its foundation is said to be from the first century AD and uh, then it was built and rebuilt in different period. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Then uh, this is a door frame found in place called Dauparbatiya near Tejpu in Assam. So this is regarded uh, as the earliest specimen of the visual art or sculpture, stone sculpture in this region. It is dated 6th century AD that is contemporaneous to the Gupta period and is uh, displayed the Gupta style of sculpture. The next so these are uh, the historical development and uh, some specimen of uh, sculpture from 8th century, 11th, 13th centuries. The next slide. So uh, if, we, if you look at some of this sculpture, the uh, first Durga, Moshe Mardin, then a uh, second one, the Durga, uh, that is a bronze uh, sculpture. Uh, the bronze sculpture represents the same deity. If you see the minimal, minimal, minimalism in the second sculpture, which represents the face and uh, uh, the uh, head of the demon, then we get some other uh, carving in the uh, medium of wood, which became popular during the medieval period. And uh, lastly, we see a tribal uh, figure, tribal sculpture of the same body. You can uh, see the simplification that uh, the art form or the artist in modern time strive for. Next slide. Now, if we uh, see the culture, identity and art. So, we can cite some examples from uh, the folk art. So, this is a uh, vernacular architecture that is uh, architecture of a bachelor dormitory which is called Chamadi of uh, Tiwa community. This architecture contains carving. In the uh, uh, lower slides, you can see the carving of uh, female dress and the post in the post also, there are carvings and paintings and which uh, represents uh, the symbolically the genital, male genital. So, uh, if you see the architecture and uh, uh, sculpture representation in this uh, uh, particular architecture, it's not represent the cultural identity. It also represents the art and these cultures and institutions ensures the continuity of art. Next slide. Then, when we uh, reach the medieval period, we see the development of uh, the uh, movement called uh, Neo Vaishnavism, which for different artistic activities like uh, architecture, uh, through this uh, movement, uh, a particular kind of institution developed which is called Patra, which is the monastery 
and it is centered around a architecture of number which is prayer about which incorporates the four elements of the previous architecture and elements from the Hindu temple architecture. It is a synthesis of both the folk and the classical temple architecture. Next slide. In, uh, uh, in Assam, we see the development of painting in the form of manuscript painting. Perhaps the manuscript painting that developed in this region, especially in Assam, is perhaps the oldest one. Because it is, uh, it is done on the bark of a particular tree called Hasi or Agar tree, which is prepared through a very special technical process, then color and ink are traditionally prepared and the paintings and books were illustrated. In some of such manuscripts, you will see what is called the abstract painting, especially in the manuscript called Anathipatam. And in the uh, right hand one where you see the elephants, that represents the core style, which is Ahom style, uh, that incorporates styles of the uh, mainland India. There is synthesis of a stylistic element in this work. That is from Hasti Vidhanava uh, ministry. Next slide. We see the tradition of wood carving that continued in the Hotraj or monasteries of Assam. You will see uh, the living tradition of wood carving in different Hotraj. Next slide. Another uh, very important tradition that this land or the Hotraj possesses is the Mukha or the mask tradition. The, uh, the uh, mask which you see in the upper two that represents the marks uh, of the Patria tradition. The others are from the folk tradition. And in the folk tradition, you can see the elements of expressionism and simplicity. Next slide. So that with this, it, the presentation comes to an end and uh, I would like to conclude that uh, through my presentation I tried to show the, uh, the cultural lineage of this, uh, this region uh, and its uh, relationship with the mainland of India, the Southeast Asia uh, and through which I wanted to re-establish the appropriate names of this, the title, Cross-Cultural Identities, a dialogue throughout, because they are all interconnected. And I am hopeful that my friends, distinguished guests, artists and scholars will have a great session and this event will turn out to be a meaningful event, will uh, develop new ideas, new knowledge, and uh, new languages in the field of visual art, which will show path to the new beginning, to the artists of this region and Southeast Asia as a whole. Thank you very much for bearing with me. I'm not prepared, perhaps I bombed many times, but thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, being here for my presentation. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Dr. Navajit Dega, uh, the resource person, who just gave a very interesting idea about like, how we're connecting between the seven states, not east of India and Southeast Asia, we share like so many uh, uh, the ethno sociology. So, in this presentation, before that, I, I drew myself that uh, I'm doing 
I also an artist doing contemporary art, but in the field of cultural based art. Actually, in this in Thailand, we have less people uh, study in this field since it's very very new branch of study. So I uh, I have done a research. Actually, the research is uh, uh, sponsored by Ministry of Education in Thailand. Uh, the research name Naga, like Naga, like the Naga in Nagaland, but with K spelling, because the concept is actually developed throughout time and throughout the geography. So uh, this presentation will explain like uh, how the seven sister state in Northeast India and Thailand share part of culture with Southeast Asia region. Uh, this, this relation, we can look back way back for thousands of years, just before the modern idea of nationality. So, uh, actually this is like a visual art research, so I, I have to obviously make an art piece. But before that, let's talk about the source of this uh, research. Please uh, open the first slide. Uh, in my research, Thailand, well, I, I, I'm going to share that uh, in 2022, the Ministry of Culture in Thailand, we are trying to uh, register one ancient book from the UTR period, that is like 600 years ago. Uh, and we registered this book to UNESCO to be a memorial of the world or the memorial of the world. This title would mean the piece of document or the story that contain uh, important core to some culture. In this part, in this uh, this book has written by Prince Kung or Prince Tamati Bay, Prince in Utia, Thai Prince in Utia period. Uh, he written this in uh, uh, how do you say like half Cambodia and half Thai language. So the book is in there, his photo was like in the corner, of course. Uh, the book is the story about uh, Buddhism Charaka, that once uh, Lord Buddha has met one uh, great Naga named Nando Vananta. Uh, the next slide, please. Okay. And this kind of writing in Thailand, actually writing for being performed in uh, the things called Kandong Sanok, which is like the way of pronounced poet. You can try open the, the video for some short part so we can see the idea how it looks like, how it sounds like. And you can maybe forward to the, the video part. Uh, this this is this is kind of not something. Just we just go faster because we have uh, less time. Okay. So I think this is enough. Uh, anyway, the Tenos now is considered like a very high level of art amongst all the Thai like literary literary art field. Just go to the next slide. And this uh, this piece of this Raja, uh, the whole story that once the Lord Buddha have made like the greatest Naga, uh, one of the greatest name uh, Nanto Pananga. He is like so powerful, so he can uh, transform his body to be like enormous size and cover all the Sumeru mountain. So the Buddha cannot go to the heaven. Uh, next, please. So in Thailand, you can see, like, no, not this one, not this one. You 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 open the wrong the wrong hole point five. That should be like that one too. Uh, you can see like this is a mural painting in where the last temple. If you go to Thailand, you see, yeah, this is the Buddhist statue named Nagpo. It's like the Buddha sit and the Naga protect him. So it's well known in Thailand that Naga is like one of the Buddhist faith have a lot of uh, have a big faith in Buddhism, but in Nandovanadasun, this story 
it shows like a very interesting fact because that uh, in this story, I fought against Buddhism. He fought to one Lord Buddha. And if you look deeply in this story, you can see the hierarchy of power. Like the Buddha has like the most powerful uh, being. Then his apostle, uh, Mogulana, get uh, approved from Buddha to uh, beat the Naga. So in this story, Naga is like in the lowest power here. So let's compare to. So I feel this is very interesting, especially since I've come to presentation in Northern States that we share like a social uh, culture here about Naga. So I check more in Thai ancient literature about Naga, and there will be like four very interesting stories, very famous that you can see all over Thailand talking about it. First is Praluang. Praluang is like a uh, mythology guys, like a man in the legion, that he, his power is like, once he speak anything, that thing becomes true. Uh, when we look deeply in the manuscript, it turned out that he's actually, uh, his mother actually a Naga. Like in this story, you can see Naga uh, stand for an ancestor of the hero, of the Thai local hero. The second one is like a Padam Nanai. This is like the story that explains. You can see uh, the below the below photograph. This is the province named Nong Han. This city is like a, uh, half of the city have been over with water. So that story named Padanam can explain that long ago uh, people messed up with some Naga here and he made this place like flat. And you can see the geography still there. So it's, this story, Naga stands for a geography explanation. Of course, not science, but its belief is like local. This is what we do. So, and if you go to northeast part of Thailand, there we have a festival named Bun Tang Phai. This festival, we are celebrating for rain. So there we make like a huge firework. You can see that like how huge it is. Then he shoot it through the sky. So we make this uh, firework look like Naga because that story that before time in Thailand, we believe that uh, there is a, a spirit named Tan. Tan is the one who created everything in the universe, created the world, created human. So once Buddha has born as a thorn, you can see here, we call it like Yakanka. Then the Tan feel like a little bit bad because Buddha got here but he doesn't know before so he like punish people, punish everything that doesn't tell him beforehand that Buddha is going to be here so he can like arrange things. So he made rain stop. And in the story, Naga shows up and said, okay, I just go to the sky and talk to Tan. So to so, solve the problem, so this in this story, Naga stands for the origin of baseball and man saver. And the very last one is the legion of Urangkata. This is like uh, we have like five big stupa in Thailand, and this chair the culture Thai Lao culture. This is the ethnic uh, on the Khom River shore. So this five stupa. They are built in different time and different period, built by different person, but it all share in the same story. Actually, it's like romance story that people die, love each other, but they die, they reincarnate over and over again. And with that, there is like one great Naga save all people and make all the people fulfill their destiny by connecting them. So in this, uh, in this legend. Naga stands for guardian of like the big protagonist, like the most, the greatest stupa. So once we see like all four uh, story that Naga stands for like Buddhist protection, but in Nandrovananda Sutkamlu is quite different because he show up as a villain. So this one we show like, uh, we can see the way that Buddhism go to the place that have a Naga social, no sorry, Naga ethno-sociology 
and merge with them and how Thailand uh, Buddhism become like so powerful in Thailand. So I developed the idea and make this like semi point Euler <laughs> chart that show Naga concept and perspective and Naga function and role in social structure in ancient Thailand. You can see like the black one is like concept and perspective that Naga should stand for uh, ancestor of rest, uh, stand for being a sacred being and local good, uh, local god, sorry. Uh, he also state of supernatural power and guardian of sacred area, also a uh, symbol of Buddhism. By these five concepts, he also developed into five social functions that he also, because he protect of the place, he protect of human. So he become a way of agriculture, like make rain falling for agriculture uh, civilization. And explain the natural phenomenon. He also stands for like the one who holding knowledge of architecture because we build a uh, temple. He also using his form as a tool, like a part of it of the architecture. He also uh, being source of astrology and inspiration of fine art. So this concept still develop and exists till this very day. You can see in. Thai pop culture, you see many cases of Naga like still appear and so powerful. Okay, we start with the basic, like you go to any temple, the religions way, Naga are super well known as a guardian of Buddhism. So in temple, you can see he like, uh, he be at the stair, mostly stair to the, to the biggest temple, the biggest uh, room in the temple where we put the Buddha structure here, statue there. So he will be like the guardian in front of that. In politics, uh, Naga also protecting of the, the, the royal family. This is, if you see the news, you will see like this is the royal board that every time the, we have new king, they will make like a board trip parade. I'm not sure like proper word of it. But this is like an Andhra it's made like forever and I got protection. And this is like, they also make like a royal temple form after this board. So he also play a role in uh, social function in this. And also in popular culture, we can see a lot of Naga products here. Like this is like the pin, the, the music instrument with Naga form. This is very famous in Molam music. If you go into music festival like Kathashbury, you always see it. Then this is a match box. Like in India, you guys have the acne, right? So proud of the rocket we have. And tell be so proud of the Naga we have. <laughs> and then we have Naga energy drink. So you can see how strong it is. <laughs> Moreover, a few years ago, we have like a very, like a full movie with like super cool CG, like with this Naga in Kaiju form. We have like the, this is the uh, I forgot the name, Tao. Tao. He's like super hot. So she uh, act in starring as a Naga, like a Naga queen. See ya. Uh, so sometimes they appear in human form, sometimes in uh, demi human form, and sometimes in like uh, in mythology creature form. So we see the development of this mythology creature from local court uh, to kaiju to like very pop culture and now uh, it's become more level because Thailand are going to register to like the more the month so after 11 we are going to new uh, animal of state which is like Naga uh, we see like the cre the crazy on Naga things are developing throughout time so we have like conspiracy photo that try to show like people are too so into it. Like this is actually the snail, the big snail, one type of big snail crawling on the mud and people see it so they like start washing that mud. You see this family, uh, I have to censor them because we have a PDA. Uh, by the way, this, this cloud like Naga flying by so they are like, oh, I'm so 
proud of being this photo. <laughs> we also have like the new tourist players named the Naga Chef. That I'm like, I wish this is like the sun prank. You guys, like we are in this, um, it, uh, archaeologists feel you see like this. Sometimes this happen to the old players, right? The mud get heat and rain for time and maybe like a sun crack here, but it totally look like a snake thing. So it's like become super famous now. You go to Thailand, you see like thousands of Chinese tourists like worshiping there. So great. So we develop like a lot of product and it's become the source of the um, inspiration of making new product and culture service and I don't know, could be a soft power. Who knows? my research, I'm doing this concept, conceptual framework, like how I developed this idea into art form. Uh, so I start with the ancient manuscript, then I try to analyze their content, and I see like there's uh, like three big problems, that is like Buddhism, and the uh, polytheism idea, and of course the supernatural, the idea of that belief in supernatural. So, by this three idea, when they merge, so I used a wind oiler to like represent it. You can see like the, it come out with the idea that good or very defeat evil, but the biggest power should be like Buddhism, miracle, and of course, the Naga, how mighty he is. So, with this three concept, I try to make it contemporary so like the youngster, the new generation can get into it. So I developed two ideas with the uh, art analysis. So I use like the kitsch styles. The kitsch style is like more like fun type and the uh, concept of material. So the problem of doing art with classic theme is like people, the young people, the new generation, totally not into it. They feel it's like it's too hard to get to and they're even afraid to touch it because it's Classic come with idea of like expensive, so people don't really like expensive things. They like to own it, not to touch it. If it's not be, it not their belonging. So I use this to analyze this concept to develop to output as a contemporary art piece. So this is the kitsch style. Like you can see, throughout time, the local folk, the primitive, are developing from so from the various like serious classic like art form. Someone do it in like a kaiju type, like you know kaiju, right? The plastic ring things, it's like big monster. Or someone doing it with like super pop style. And this is the kitsch style, like a fun type. I really like this one. Uh, we have like the event named the uh, Himapan Marshmallow in Thailand that our youngsters suddenly have, uh, go to many, many temples to see this funny statue of mythology, of mythology creature. And they collect it, and then it's like completely happen. Everyone throws it for a month, and then this kind of creature becomes so popular among the young. I think this is a very interesting uh, event that happened. Of course, obviously on the internet, but still we can study something from it. So I use this type, and I also doing like this. This is my previous project, the dragon thing. So I try to use it. The same thing to make. Uh, as a source of inspiration in my new work. Uh, this is the sketch, let's go past it. Yeah. Um, okay, so we uh, have to show this in this room because I got the scholar from government, so they have like one hall, they asking me to make something on it in the, uh, from Nantokwanan Sutkamu Kong. So this room you can see, for art people, this is like very bad place for installation. You, I cannot put any nail on this. It's illegal to destroy the government property. So, no screw. Then, this is on the sixth floor. Super high. No elevator. <laughs> no big elevator. They have like just the same size we have here. So small. So, I have to develop the idea to make this art into like make it small small piece like Lego it 
was come to the idea that we make one by one and the other team might him all the dough. So they have to carry the lighting. So this is like putting our jigsaw together and here it is like my this work this is Naga. It's like 14 men long because it's like it. I can try to make it as much as I can in under the circumstance of financial of course of the sponsor. So uh, we make like lighting things and now it's still uh, now it's still uh, setting in this home. But after the time uh, here come to this workshop, uh, the one of my friends in Ministry of Culture contact me because of this uh, register of UNESCO moment the moment. So we try to like develop this uh, this work of Naga into like the bigger uh, exhibition. We try to talk about it in the most various way as we could, and I think. Since I come to this seventh step, that your discussion would be valuable for me. As many you guys, uh, like, I don't know, who live in Nagaland? <laughs> Just in case. And that's all. Thank you. Good night, everybody. My name is Khan Yuhan. I'm regularly in the Phuket Flash Art Museum. Uh, it is uh, Phuket in the famous of the tourism and uh, Today, apart from believing in the symbol of Southern Thailand's board, the result of the study is the, the, the creation of the art on the board original for male belief and probably on the waterway to achieve life go and develop into from imaginary art from the data is it is what from that there are three things consider when designing the board. This is how accurate and believe about the symbolic and politics of the world. Uh, uh, he let me hear, explain how I will mean, go with that. Let me show. The, 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 Okay, he represents like the, the art in the cultural side uh, of making board to the Ula Ravoy people. This three type, there are three types of board that contain and used in Buddhism even in the south part of Thailand, as well in Kuwait. This uh, Praja board. In, in the project and the uh, belief and natural environment and uh, we went to the they see belief people the board among past they add African animal figure and swim crab fish fish man fish hook man bamboo fish crab and salsa wood expression cutting and having Salsa wood the flesh chair. This uh have a pattern on the project board. And uh, symbol of the birds heart, something of picture, natural form. Salsa wood. He wouldn't keep from the structure of the bird and heart. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 
นะครับแล้วที่นำมาตั้งศิลปกรรมนะครับมีคือเป็นต้นลายก็คือลายบาทซึ่งมาจากปันปลายชนะนะครับ In the first part, it's like the name of the technique of c a r p e n t of the ancient carpenter things. Uh, this technique are uh, using a uh, special technique, a special way of cutting a special wood to make this p r a c h a k board. The p r a c h a k board are uh, made into a form of bird, and turtle, and fish. Uh, they cutting the wood into a form of fish uh, feet. So this way of Idea represent the idea that how they how they connect Buddhism and the way of their worshiping in the ancestor and the three spirit the t o k r o n g and t o k a o k a r a t a i which is Anaga and t o k s a y that mean the god of mountain. <laughs> Uh, this is like uh, the drawing of him, of him in studying of this p r o j e c t board. Uh, sorry, a c o l l a b o r d c o l l a b o r d is uh, say in the, uh, the south of Thailand and the Muslim uh, Muslim people. Uh, this is uh, painting pencil. In the c o l l a b o r d s o m e t i m e s it's uh, painting on board. All that board is like uh, they are not doing like wood carving, but they make like in simple form of board, and they give like a special way of painting, special material color on it, so it will like you last on the sea, on with the sea water and the humid, and of course the sunshine. This color will like last very long. <laughs> This is the p h n o m p r a b o a t Is the p h n o m p r a is a t e w a r o h a n a festival uh, after the l a b u d a back to the world. Uh, back to the world. This is a p h n o m p r a is a s u r a t a n i province, southern of Thailand. Because in the p h n o m p r a have a the sculpture. And the mixed media and the, the uh, sticker, <laughs> yeah, contemporary p r e s e n t in the แสดงความตรงกันแล้วตรงกันก็คือตัวตัวตรงกันอีกเซนเตอร์เซนเตอร์ออฟบอร์ดที่ก็มี This is this. Architecture named Phnom Krak, named after one province in Sri Lanka. Okay. Uh, this is actually a pirate type of board. They're making this to celebrate the day. The very day that, according to the mythology, once Lord Buddha have visiting heaven, so to uh, to teach his dharma to all the angel, and by that time in human world, uh, so like. Chaotic because Buddha wasn't there. So once he come back to human world, uh, they celebrate drink for that event. In in in, in the Lhasa Phra, is the Phnom Phra. It will be the matter of belief. It will be the matter of Buddhism. And the Lhasa Phra that was brought over is the Phnom Phra. The Phnom Phra is the main temple of Buddha. It will be the matter of belief. The Phnom Phra is the main temple of Buddha. It will be the matter of belief. การแกะสลักไม้แล้วก็การปาสีนะครับใช้วิธีการจัดวางครับส่วนใหญ่เป็นแบบนี้ทั้งหมดนะครับแต่ที่สังเกตเป็นสําคัญก็คือว่าคนเล่นทีเชิงเชิงช่างเนี่ยไม่ได้ไม่ได้มาจากช่างในพื้นที่เป็นช่างจากเมืองภาคกลาง compared to other two board the Phnom Penh is more complicated because it's using the technique of wood carving and also the painting technique that represent only in Southern part of Thailand, you will see like most of the symbol that appear in Phnom p a h board. You will see Karuda and Naga, which show the connection between the local South area and the middle part of Thailand. That uh, we are actually in the part of in the border of two ethnic s o c i e t i c because between the Chinese type and the Naga 
uh, ethnic and the Aryan things. So you see mixed culture there. Uh, the, one of the things he present, the one of the biggest point he present, he said you can see like how they mix the technique of making between the local sounds and the carpenter technique from uh, from Amitya or from the Bangkok area. ปัจจุบันไปสู่โลกแห่งความความสุขและอีกมิติหนึ่งในสัญลักษณ์ใช่ๆโลกที่ 3 นะครับเรื่องความเชื่อเรื่องศิลป์และล้อเรื่องศาสนาและศาสนาพุทธนะครับเรื่องพระจักรก็ไม่มีศาสนาก็สร้างจากความรู้สึกนะครับเป็นต
that uh, this holy and more are uh, related to local belief. The agnostic goal that are built in both are the whole which are the characteristic of the placement on the white pattern and on the ship body consists of a mixture of Thai, Chinese, and Arabic design. Uh, this type of board are uh, one of the cultural, uh, how do you say? Yeah, yeah. Strategy? Yeah, the cultural, Thai cultural strategy to explore the local culture. Uh, enjoy this. Uh, this is like a surprise of all the videos, but uh, I will give our paper later. Thank you. <laughs> Today I will uh, present an uh, article titled uh, Creative Work of the Imagination from Life at Night. Uh, every life's experience is value and meaning. I noticed, uh, recognized, and experienced from the experience of the uh, natural environment near yeah, until forming a form of truth uh, imagination that's one to convey the artistic of life during the night, uh, which is full of uh, emotion and feeling of thirst for silent wise. Many lies are asleep, but another lie is a beginning I create that's an inspiration to the crea creation of artwork. Uh, experience of perception uh, it is important in the uh, development of human aesthetic. Aesthetic can be divided into two parts: uh, category to the beauty of man-made object and natural beauty of cause. The interpretation of beauty comes from the experience of each person's perception of beauty, uh, unique or have view and opinion different way of thinking artistic experience is that uh, is therefore essential in developing a perception of beauty and uplifting the human spirit. Uh, creative work of the imagination from night at light inspired by the experience and surrounding of the creator Seeing the beauty in uh, of the dark atmosphere at night, which has found that they are still living, things that are still moving and life life. Uh, as it is during the day show showing uh, mutual support of the natural environment, such as trees, mountain, rivers, flora and animal. There's a, a phenomenon of the environment that are valuable. Uh, the process of creating uh, data collection is, is a field visit in the real area to collect data by drawing or recording with a camera uh, to gather interesting and uh, you then information to support the inspiration. The main concept to lead uh, to the results of the style of the world and clear and is unique. Uh, this, uh, this picture shows the data analysis live at night to explore the uh, possibility of artistic uh, expression. Okay, next uh, I'm sketching is a uh, inspired processing and data analysis to the creation of the sketch to research to create image uh, speech in speech of ideas or imaginary image to become 
a key principle used in the creation of the real world. Okay, creative works of the imagination from the rise at night uh, use the data analysis process to ask company in the information of uh, inspiration from the analysis uh, of the data, the impression of the expression of the content in phenomenon of the night and remains was so. Uh, in addition to the drawing, there are also sculpture. sculpture. This sculpture is a welding technique, welding technique, and made by uh, iron. Uh, I create with the animal form, showing uh, instinct, the unique uh, personality of the each animal. Uh, is, uh, it is conveyed to uh, imagination and those process. You are from the essence of natural uh, phenomena and uh, environments according to the objective is to create artwork that can uh, convey the story and beauty of the lights at night, uh, demonstrate the connection and relationship of light in nature, reflects truth the night from the creativity found the use of animal shape to uh, represent cells hiding uh, for night hunting able to communicate such concept very well. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Hi everyone. May I introduce myself first? My name is Sukumala. You can call me Sukumala too. Actually, I'm from Sukumala University. My faculty is Faculty of Painting, Sculpture and Graphic Art. And I'm also in the mixed media department. First of all, I want to introduce a little bit about myself. I'm interested in about uh, history and about the visual art in Southeast Asia, especially about the uh, Buddhism, because I'm um, really like to make a meditation and also to pray for the Buddhists or something like that. So my artwork is uh, depend on my who is the woman in the 21st century. And what is about aesthetic art alive? This is about me who is the woman in the 21st century and um, interest about aesthetic and art and also the something in Southeast Asia. This is my artwork. My, this piece is about the Tara. You know Tara? Tara is about uh, the Buddhism and about the woman, about the power of the woman. So this is my artwork is about the power of the woman in Southeast Asia. And this is uh, about the visual art that I'm trying to search and research about the Tara, about the statue, and also the moral painting, and about the, like, uh, the painting about the Tara. Uh, this is the kind of about the painting about Tara too. So my artwork is the combination about performance art, mixed media, and installation, but based on the research about the Southeast Asian woman. And this is my art piece too. And this is like a moral painting and about the like a Bali leaf in the Nakhon Patong. Nakhon Patong is a province in Thailand uh, and they have like a, a found some Bali leaf about the woman who play the instrument, five instruments in the combat home. This is quite important uh, Bali leaf in Thailand because actually not at least we found the statue of the early leaf about the woman in Thailand because as you know, uh, after uh, we came to Thai because we are not Thai after 1932 before that we are Siamese and you can call me uh, like Ayutthaya or Ayutthaya or Chukot Thai blah 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 but after 1932 we are called Thai so this is the reason why we are like to know more about me, who is not Thai before, but we are came to be Siamese. And this is like a, beyond that. This is the Tarawi period. And this is 
it had me too much. So this is the, like uh, the source that gave me the information that came to my art piece after that. This is me who played the art instrument by myself. Um, for the technique, I, I record the video one by one, and after that, I use like a uh, Adobe Art Effect to make a video to make me to be of a five person. My friend said that you one person is quite scared <laughs> about you five persons in one frame. <laughs> Just kidding, it's something like that. And this is uh, my video that's installation in one room with a performance and uh, sounds art because my friend. Uh, she likes to play a cello, and so she is a celloist who is the woman who plays cello by, by by herself. And I like uh, share her the, all my, my my thinking, my thought, and after that we make a piece together. And this is the last piece that we talking about that and make us installation together with a video installation. And however, after that. I want to know more about the Siamese and we try to get more information about the role of women uh, before uh, going to Thai. It means like a Siamese period. So I, I saw her. Uh, actually, I study in the high school than her father. Uh -huh. She is a queen region and I study in the school that uh, her father in the past. Uh, she is the queen regent uh, at the queen of the King Rama V of King Chulalongkorn. Uh, she has a very important role because she is the queen regent who is the first queen regent. And after we have uh, uh, Queen Rama the first until now, we have uh, just only two queen regents. Now this is the first first queen regent, and after that is the uh, queen of the King Rama the ninth. And yeah, okay, she know, he know that I have only 15 years, okay. <laughs> and after that, it's about the costume, anything about the costume of the Queen Regent. And I will let you know what about the Queen Regent and about the costume of the five girls in the Barry Leaf. Yeah, this is quite important. And this is her mother of the Queen Regent, the first Queen Regent too. This is a John Mandapiam of his mother, who trying to combination about East Miss West, who trying to carry on the costume between the, uh, the, the, the East and the West too. So this is quite the first picture about the, that period. Uh -huh. And after that, my artwork is combination about the woman, uh, combination about the costume too. Somebody said that why you have to vary a lot of costume or has to like create about the costume because this is our South Asia um, thought. Yeah, because you know, it's just a different thing. <laughs> okay, so this Yeah. And this is my artwork combination about the uh, about the, the, the thinking about the woman about the power and the knowledge about my research about the woman in South Asia too. Yeah, just like that. And this is a temple in Thailand, Kawatasung. Thailand people know more about Kawatasung because it's quite famous in Thailand, but it's not like a very tradition temple now. It's like contemporary temple because uh, what Tasun used like a, a lot of glasses to make like a heaven to the real real world, just like that. This is a make me interest about the material to relate between me and installation and also the object that I'm making in my artwork too. But however, in my artwork, I'm interested about the sound too because the sound is quite really important because in uh, in the method or the way of the Buddhism or praying, we have the sound to use to make a meditation or something like that or devotion, just like that. So in my artwork, 
uh, use sound to present about the, the things just like that. But however, I'm not just the ordinary or the same tradition, but I try, try to transfer or transform from the past to the present to contact with another person, especially for the young person. So this is the, like the denotion and prayers, but not in the normal situation. I use like a violin, cello, uh, and also I can remember the instrument harp huh? or something like that to make a voice and sound with the devotions of Buddhism. I'm quite interested in uh, this 
violin because I am trying to not call my home. This is quite important space of mine. Okay, a little bit is separate because I have short time. So after that, uh, so my artwork is depend on the about the research or my 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 research is a aesthetic art and life that I try to research about the aesthetic of the Southeast Asian, especially on folk Thai people uh, from the era before the uh, Red Hat was in the era. Uh -huh. And this is like a beautiful or uh, beauty of the aesthetic period that period time too. This is like a um, delicate from 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 of the artwork visual too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And this is like a how should I call it? It is like costume <laughs> of the Buddhism. Uh, they like a delicate of a. Uh, Costume that I'm um, interested too that it has a uh, from the Ayutthaya period. This is quite very important temple uh, from Thai Watanaram from Ayutthaya. Yeah, and this is like a map of the Thai people. This is like a prakal for the Grand Palace of Thailand. They costume every season. <laughs> they has changed the costume every season too. And this is a Prachak of Hat. Yeah, very delicate costume too. This is the doors at Basitan. So this is uh, the reason why that uh, my my artwork and my research is combined together about the technique of the performance art installation art is also video installation and uh, talk about the power of the woman in the past, especially of the Thai woman through my artwork that the woman who in the 21st century and this is about my artwork yeah this is about my artwork and my last artwork is about the uh, the gift to want to give something to the people because I think in the COVID-19 period to make the person uh, deep down about themselves and I think this is to get the great way to get opportunity to sharing and say hi and smile to another person or at least about my classes because the woman loves to buy a lot of classes, right? And I think this is a good way to give the something that we have not like uh, the, the most value for another person, but for me, the closest and the something that I buy is very worthy for me. And I just think that if I can give it to another person and they can smile, this is the best way to create about the art form and also the uh, good, good, right energy to another person at that time. And this is uh, my artwork. In the uh, BACC is a banker, and I go to see her. Yeah. And I'm uh, quite scared. Yeah. And especially, uh, I can call the the flags or something. We 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 use it to buy, but now we use it to get. And sharing to the security guard, to the, every person, not just only my audience who in the stage or in the, my space only, but everybody to want to come enjoy my performance. No, I still. <laughs> yeah, I just still. No present, no yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, <I> don't. <laughs> like that. Yeah, give a smile under the mask. You see? He smiles. 
go. Just like that. So after that, this is like a technique is not just like a fixings of my artwork, but it's like a, the the method to help me to try to create and give a my idea to another person, just like that. And this is my artwork too. I will let you know about my uh, YouTube channel and also my contact because we have like a short time to talk about this. We can talk it's about later. So this is like a meditation tool, but it's depend on about uh, uh, the line and my performance and meditation, something like that. Jackson Pollock too, but Jackson Pollock is quite heavy, but um, opposite. <laughs> a woman in the past like to make up. Yeah, you know that. Mala. 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 Yeah. Mala. Something like that. So, this is my aesthetic art alive. Thank you, everyone. It was a wonderful session, and uh, the topic itself, you know, it's about cross-cultural identities and it's totally fulfilling the purpose over here. As we all are here, we can understand through the presentations that we have a different cultural aspects here and we are definitely trying to get things from each other, right? So we start with the first presentation which was Dr. Nawal and it was all about the Naka contemporary art interpretation where he talked about <clears throat> the Naga and it has a connection with the Buddhism. So he talked about the, like, he related about the seven sisters over here, the seven states of India where we have a Nagaland and we have a mixing culture which has a kind of connection with Thailand. And he's also emphasized on the idea of where they are trying to register a 600 year old book. Right. So, <clears throat> we found that in his presentation, he showed us about the importance of vocal and the importance of vocal in the Thai philosophy. So, when we saw the presentation, we could understand about the hierarchy of power, where he showed it through different stories, you know, from the story, the four stories of Naga, where <clears throat> in one story, like whatever is his speaking it turns to be true right so in like this way he has told about four stories and the importance of naga in the role of thai culture so at the end he also enlightened us about the naga is in the thai pop culture we have we have seen the nagas as a guardian on the gates right so this is how the uh, he has been doing the research and uh, his output is coming in the form of contemporary art which he has showed in his artwork also which has been displayed in the art gallery. So indeed it was really a wonderful presentation Dr. Nawaz. Thank you again for enlightening us about all the important aspects of your paper and indeed we have seen that knowingly or unknowingly we have seen all these figures right in the movies also when we go in the posters also we have seen that but today we got the insightful knowledge about all those forms and things. So thank you so much Nawaz. So we have next presentation about, about <coughs> from Professor Khan, Assistant Professor Khan from Phuket Rajawat University. And he talked about the art from believing the symbols in Southern Thailand. So what is very important over here is to understand the importance of symbols. You know, in art we have a lot of symbols and his research includes that particular area where he is looking after all the symbols where he talked about the various beliefs through symbols, the expression and the techniques used to create uh, the boats, right? The boat is the Colin boat, right? The Colin is in Thailand, it's boat, right? So, <coughs> he talked about the various beliefs also and the good belief and bad belief. He emphasized on there are several beliefs in which he has auspicious belief, the beliefs about hell and heaven, etc. Okay? So, he related all the symbols and the utilization of symbols into the board and where he emphasized about the pattern, the painting colors and the technique because somewhere it is the wooden technique, right, carving technique and 
from southern Thailand how it is now mixing with the Bangkok thing, where he has pointed out that now it's a you know uh, cultural fusion, right? And uh, that is one of the most important thing which is going on in this contemporary era. We are going towards the fusion thing. So apart from that, he talked about the beliefs also where he talked about the holy bird, holy snake, and the representation of symbolic animals on the board. So in this paper overall, we got an insightful knowledge about the representation of symbols, the importance of expressions, and the utilization it into a physical artwork. So indeed, it was a very good presentation. Thank you so much, Assistant Professor Khan. So next, after that, we had Assistant Professor Python from Phuket Raja University. And his work was creative work on the imagination from life at night. So it, did, it was really a wonderful presentation where we found about the different types of work and the random sketches which he, ha he has been doing. And he has been utilizing and the spontane spontaneity which we say that because see art is sometimes a very you know planned way and sometimes it comes in a very spontaneous way. So the spontaneity is always there when we are relating it with our life. And what he has tried to do is has related the art with the life at night in the Thailand. So indeed, sir, it was a really wonderful presentation, and we really get to know about the life over there because see, we are all staying there, and you are coming from there, and you have shared your culture, your experience, your the life over there, and we are really, really thankful for you to you also for enlightening us about all those aspects, sir. Thank you so much. So after that, we had. Assistant Professor Sukumala from Silpagwan University, where she has talked about the aesthetics, art, and life. The first and most important thing which I realized that she is working upon herself only, first thing. Like me as a power. She is always talking about the woman as a power, which is a very important issue. And uh, the, she has pointed out the role of women in 21st century. So that is a very, very important thing and I'm really happy that you have pointed out this thing because in the contemporary issues we are definitely women in 21st century are having a lot of powerful power things and you are depicting it in your performances. So her, perf her work is a mixture of performance art, mixed media art, installation which we have gone through and it, the basic thing over there is how the aesthetics has been used from the daily life, you know. The collaboration of aesthetics and life it gives a new form to art and that's what we have seen in her works and we really appreciate for your effort doing those, all those performance and the way you have documented it itself, it's a piece of art only. So I'm really thankful to you. When we talk about the work in performance art, we always talk about the contemporary space. You know, it's not about the closed four rooms, it's always about the space which is outside and the way you are utilizing the space, the way you are utilizing the audience, the way you are utilizing the sound, which you as pointed out that sound, the vocals are a very important part in the performances. So definitely indeed the collaboration of all these three aspects in your performance was seen and it was really appreciated by each and every one of us. And uh, we are very, very thankful to you for sharing your personal work because it is from a different segment of art and it really, you know, enlightened us also about what performance is, how it is going about and uh, how the coming generation will learn from it. So I'm very, very thankful to you and especially the la la last slide which she showed about the importance of giving, you know. Once you give something to someone else, it brings a smile on you and that's the best part which we all like and uh, indeed we are trying to give something to everyone over here. Whatever we have, the knowledge, we are like uh, experiences, we are trying to share and definitely we are going to learn from each other and the sole purpose of this workshop is to learn, you know, we are from different background and we want to learn and we will learn with a broader smile on our face. So once again, thank you all of you for your excellent paper presentations and we are looking forward in the next session where we will see all the paper next paper presenters and uh, hopefully again we will be meeting very soon after lunch this time and uh, thank you once again thank you
Thank you, Dr. Prakash Kishun. And I think now we shall go for a break, lunch break. And after lunch break, we shall gather again here for the next session. So, thank you, everyone. We will start with the session by our resource person, Shri Rafal Rajri, who is an eminent artist, creative director, and the founder of Reganti Academy. May we have him here? I'm Rafael Rajri from Shillong. Uh, actually, I will be presenting a paper on the uh, discourse, discovery of the Khasi visual art tradition. So essentially, uh, it doesn't have uh, much to do with images. So I have very few slides over here, but nevertheless, I'll try to uh, uh, deliver as much as possible, whatever uh, the content. Because you find it clear that uh, in our uh, tradition, we don't have this tradition. Uh, I mean, in our culture, we don't have this tradition of visual art. But it was such an irony that we, uh, the, you know, the people here, the artists, have this urge to express through the visual form. So now I'll go, uh, uh, but I prepared people, so I'll just read through. The Khasi uh, belief and folk tradition prohibit the creation of image and consider the act of creating tangible image as a taboo, especially the image of ancestors divine entity or anything that is revered in society or mankind. Any image taking material is perceived as a dummy of the original image, like a scarecrow chasing away birds and animals from the agricultural field, and the mask which is used in farm fair for fun and amusement. This is the reason that during the funeral ceremony, uh, all the structure, I mean, uh, I'm talking about these people who are professing the indigenous faith. Uh, all the you know, structures of certain form are, are destroyed before the final rituals of the cremation. Even the hearers that is used to carry the corpse from the cremation pyre has to be destroyed before the body is incinerated. Uh, there, is a, there is a festival uh, here which involves ceremony also, which is called... You can go to the next slide. Uh, uh, which is called Bedikham. Actually, it relates with the, with the, you know, with this tradition of, uh, uh, it, it is, it incorporates a lot of uh, elements about, uh, you know, uh, uh, about agricultural activities, it's about uh, casting away pestilence and all these things. So, uh, uh, here what they do, they used to dance in, in a mud, mud pool. And in this ceremony, also they used to have some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, towering structure as part of the ceremony where they, they, they build up. So, but this structure also, in the same manner, uh, before the, uh, uh, you know, the winding up of the festival, they, they, they will uh, come into a ditch, they will destroy it. So, so, so uh, this has come about uh, to, to, you know, to, Subscribe to this tradition that we don't have a visual art tradition at all. So uh, uh, this culture has some, uh, uh, you know, similarity with the Durga uh, Pija festival of the Hindu, where the idol are immersed in the river and then after they dismantle it. So what is the purpose? That um, I'm not aware about it. And, and there is an, also an element. If you look, look at these structures, they, they resemble also the tazias of the of the Muslim, of the, you know, uh, during the Muharram of the Islam, where the, the, these Tazia also are carried throughout the uh, procession, and at the end of the, uh, you know, of the ceremony of the procession, they used to immerse on the, on the river. So, likewise, the Khasi also, we, we have this kind of, you know, where we make uh, elaborate provision of the, of, you know, especially the, the house, when somebody died, we, we make elaborate, you know, with specific symbols of the of this uh, structure of the hairs where they used to carry the dead body. But uh, when they took it to the to the you know to the cremation pile, then they will they will dismantle this before the 
actual ceremony is performed. So now, uh, let's go to the next. Uh, this, this, uh, these are the kind of things that they, they used to have. So now, uh, uh, next time. We have the, uh, next thing. Uh, we have the monoliths. The monoliths, uh, so we, we have this very vibrant stone culture. But if you look at these stones also, uh, we don't have any carving of image in them. So in being or uh, in a, any other uh, you know, activities, we do, we, uh, uh, there are no images apart from the simple pattern design of, on the hem or something like that. So even the bamboo crafts or, uh, also does, doesn't have any uh, design. We just have plates and stressing more on the fun functional convenience of the article. Therefore, aesthetic and the fussy are more of a functional and beneficial for individual content, uh, containment or social convenience. For that matter, there are no traces of visible folk art inherited from their ancestors. Uh, Kasi Fulisfi revealed that the Pamina abode is the home of the deities. Uh, I'm trying also to, you know, just, not to just talk about, uh, you know, uh, this tradition of uh, visual art. I'm trying to, since you are all composed of the, you know, uh, delegates from different parts of the world, I want to share our, uh, you know, uh, understanding, sharing knowledge about our culture also. So, please bear with me. I may mean, take a little bit more time. So, Mm. Uh, Hasi philosophy revealed that the permanent abode is the home of the deities and that is why the mortal body may be composed by the spirit will stay at the threshold to the abode of the divine. Which literally referring in Hasi as Bonkwai Hedwara play or eating, eating Bethlehem. Uh, and why we say uh, eating Bethlehem? Because in Hasi custom we consider that Bethlehem as a symbol of honor to welcome the guests. Uh, so this is uh, uh, there, uh, uh, to rejoice or share the conversation around the heart. So we feel that there is no other opportunity in life or after life to be ushered upon the abode of the divine to rejoice and co converse at the sacred heart. And why we call it at the threshold? You know, uh, Hasi regard uh, reaching the doorstep to, of the abode of the divine is the ultimate, and still much more privileged to eat bitter nut and share a conversation inside the room of the divine. Therefore, the temporal life on earth is to abide by the code of ethics where we call it to, to earn righteousness, to abide by the maternal and paternal plan relation, and to organize human and divine conduct. Uh, I want to emphasize a little bit here, uh, on this aspect of maternal and paternal plan so We are also like a uh, few other cultures across the world, very few, uh, among us, we uh, you know we, we have we have this practice of matrilineal, where we trace our lineage to the mother. It's from the you know women. So in the present context, contemporary art expression is emerging and prevailing to reveal Hasi thought. Some artists portray elements of Hasi identity in their artworks. The facade of the hut uh, has been the display area for the men who are particularly hunters and drivers. Usually, the antlers of the stack are fixed at the upper frontal portion of the hut. Uh, uh, oh, I don't have the pictures here. Sorry. The, they used to put the, you know, uh, put this antlers of the stack at the, you know, facade of the house. Uh, after the introduction of the architecture here in, you know, in our part of the country, which we call it Assam type. So the builder of the house also would install the created image of their personal choice on those front edge. The artistic expression and fixing of animal antlers at the top portion of the front door could be the prominent visual for art uh, installation at every Hasi house. This is, you know, our uh, kind of uh, uh, opinion. The popular trend is that the deer and the stack antlers that are related to the customary community hunting expedition. The traditional hunting expedition is being considered after chanting prayer to the deities seeking divine sanction. The foundation of this tradition is based on the myth about, we call it the Yorulurura or the chaotic market of all creatures on earth. So in that market, uh, uh, we have a, a legend where, 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 where the animals also want to imitate the, the human being, you know, to have a market where they can 
perform, uh, you know, have uh, training and merchandise. Yeah. So simply narrated that all the animals ridicule uh, Kadom. It is a bitch uh, for selling. They are se she's selling this uh, stinking uh, bean sauce. That sauce, which is a very delicacy in our uh, culture, but uh, it has a very uh, initially when you, you it has a very unpleasant uh, smell. But uh, but it's a very good one that uh, you know that we used to cherish. And uh, and that's why it's believed. Uh, and uh, and when this animal they trample upon this uh, sauce, I mean they ridicule her. And uh, so the this trace of this you call it tumurma is lying on their feet. So we have this tradition of uh, telling that, you know, from that day that the dogs are, are, are the, you know, the dogs of the family Canada are the animal that can trace all these animal, uh, you know, uh, sense of wherever they travel. Since that incident, dogs fell away from the jungle because they were ridiculed by the other animals and they came to be domesticated by human with a, with a vow to serve and assist in tracking animals during the expedition, hunting expedition. During, uh, after that expedition, when uh, that hunting expedition, then uh, they, they used to have this kind of uh, hunting of uh, verses, which we call Hawaii Death Poem. And this, it signifies, it has some significance, uh, uh, signifies of triumph of man over beast, mm, or uh, good over evil, because the victim would have been viewed into human domain and perpetrated harm to the people and the society. And after that, when, whenever they got this animal and the antlers, they used to, you know, to put on the head of this, uh, their house or the hut. And this is regarded as a trophy in honor of the, of the very first shooter of that uh, hunting expedition. The Khasi custom forbid creation of images and is considered a taboo. Therefore, the artistic arts is indicated to specific and limited expression. expression. The order portion of the house is meant for convenience of utility and functions for the inhabitants. However, the facade is a frame that is not required for any function to the inhabitant and this space is a prominent display area for the original artistic creativity of the owner or the builder of the house. In a similar manner, the top frontal entrance is the ideal space for the exhibition of the symbol of victory and good fortune for the family. Uh, Dr. Desmond Kharpaplam, he is from here, from uh, Nehuani, from the Department of Cultural and Christian Studies. He has expressed that image creation is found in weaving, in ritual, and some other daily course of the people in the villages, in the rural areas. However, these, these images are not visible to the masses and do not prevail in the creative mind within the society. So it appears that the present gender, uh, especially when compared with the neighboring ethnic uh, people around uh, this area, we found that uh, uh, all the other uh, cultures of this, uh, our place, they have a very vibrant uh, you know, visual uh, uh, expression. But in our case, we have very limited kind of, uh, you know, like what you see in this model also. We don't have any uh, image creation uh, tradition. So uh, we, we just have this conjecture that maybe visual art is lost or it must have been measured beyond the tangible or it has never been in existence at all in Khasi society. Therefore, the Khasi community is bereft of any visual art tradition and the present generation of Khasi artists will be responsible to create a certain visual identity that could be termed as Khasi art. The, otherwise, the most of the artists are general in their image creation and their work. Therefore, certain distinct visual imagery could be created and will be reflected in Khasi folklore and, will not, and that will not happen overnight as the refinement has to be articulated in right earnest without an ayata of external influence. However, this exercise might require further research, discussion and critical analysis with resourceful person, cultural exponents, the shamans, the traditional uh, practitioner and various folk custom, or even the religious ritual and ceremonies. The numerous material culture found in weaving, metallurgy, basketry, costume, ornaments, agricultural and hunting implements, domestic articles and ancient artifacts 
could provide extensive source of visual imagery. This is what we thought. Uh, uh, but at the same time, we thought that you know, a mere incorporation of these authentic cultural material might not be appropriate. Therefore, there is there is need a, con a concerted effort to create a method and technique that will conform and convince the people of it of its relation of the, uh, the relationship of this material to the community. For, furthermore, the exercise will demand patience and rigorous practice with a focus on the foundation of ethnic Khasiris. There could be any amount of time or effort to scratch the surface of Khasi folklore, so much so that any further period of time to make in-depth research and analysis on a specific topic without any external influence. The endeavor is to concentrate and give enough attention to the process in spite of obstacles and limitations while allowing the gradual germination of steady evolution of Khasi, of ethnic Khasi art in future. The definition of that character and the trend that will be created in the world of art must be open for intellectual discourse among cross-section of the stakeholders and the matter. It is for that that the local Hasi artists through generation sustain the effort to assert with the genuine spirit of advocacy and convince the art fraternity for universal acceptance of the authentic representation of, of Hasi national aesthetic identity. In the modern context, it is crucial for every artist to understand and comprehend the, the actual ethnic trait of the community and the onslaught of alien forces of social change, uh, particularly the tremendous influence of Christianity. Although the characters of Khasi culture is dynamic, there are certain elements that are uh, diluted with the new innovation, innovation of dominant tradition. There are instances that local indigenous people professing uh, ethnic Khasi uh, faith have subconsciously succumbed to the influence of interpretation of other customary practices that are not compatible with the ancient custom and tradition. There are many more words and terms that could be diluted and adulterated, and it is a matter of concern for the pictorial illustration that might deviate from ethnic origin of the Khasi community in the context of formulating Khasi ethnic art. The first core team, uh, uh, it is pertinent to explain in certain terms for clarity of the genuine ethnic element of the Khasi community the terms Inkrum. Uh, now I brought this uh, aspect because uh, uh, this Inkrum means it means the, the ribcage. So uh, we used to in, in our Khasi uh, you know uh, 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 phrase we used to call it uh, to refer it to for making pet partners which is derived actually from, from the concern, uh, con uh, Christian concept that Eve is created out of the ribs of the Adam. While the, uh, the original term, the oral Hasi term is called as Thosum, which means mark for the nuptial bond. And another term which uh, is very prevalent, we used to call Khandai Pateng Nyamra. And this Khandai Pateng Nyamra also, it means, you know, the, the nine layers of the subterranean which is equivalent to the Christian concept about hell or any other cultures elsewhere in the world. Whereas in Khasi, we call it Nurok Aksau or Mungkoy Ujong, which literally means the abode of the dejected or the friendly pool of the demon. So uh, this way, uh, if we are not very particular about all these things, we, we tend to have this kind of influence with the surrounding culture, which might not I am not talking about theory, but at least the authentic representation of the uh, of the ethnic culture has to be put into uh, you know into into right awareness. Mm. And uh, uh, talking about uh, matrimony, uh, actually uh, there is this uh, uh, traditional provinces. It's like the kingdom. No? It's equivalent to when we call it the Himalayan, Himalayan and Himalayan which is believed to be of divine ancestry. And therefore, the amicable uh, division and inception of new provinces of Hima, Kasauka, Hima Sora, Hima Maram, and in, in transition, uh, uh, you know, uh, after the British colonial invasion, is split into so many other, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, provinces. Mm. Uh, <coughs> um, there is 
another word which is, uh, we, which is uh, you know, incorporated in our community, which we call Kinyotre. Kinyotre literally means seven hearts. And seven hearts actually is, is a methodological definition of humankind according to Khasi inclusive worldview. However, the term has been associated with the exclusive Khasi community comprising of the comp composite region of the uh, we call it Khyam, Pranam, Bhoi, Wan, Maram, and Dengam. And even God also. Uh, Uplay, we used to call Uplay or God as a mas masculine divine entity. This also could have been uh, a Christian influence in the concept of one God Almighty in contrary to the Hindu religion, Hindu religious tradition of multiple gods and goddesses. While actually the original Khasi divine entity is a combination of animism, humanism and astrophysics. The English word God may not be you know, relevant in, in Khasi parlance because divinity in Khasi means the entire universe with all the components of the omniscient and omnipotent entity and for that reason, the Khasi religious divine chants, we used to have chants you know, in an uh, indigenous faith where sometimes we call Ublai, which means uh, a he god, uh, or Kablai, which means uh, you know, a she god, a goddess, and uh, Kiblai, we used also to even say Kiblai, so which means uh, um, uh, you know, uh, several numbers of gods and goddesses or deities. And this is being, you know, uh, termed without specific mention of any masculinity or any uh, feminine gender or even singular or plural digit. So that way, essentially, the Khasi term for the divine means that the entire human race, along with all the creatures, nature, every elements on earth, the universe, is one, actually, is one single entity of the divine, which is perceived as the divine God. This is the reason that it is prohibited to portray the divine in any visual form because it is purely a spiritual, uh, you know, without any uh, elements of theology or philosophy or any branch of knowledge system. It may be difficult to extend the thought process to such extreme, but the consciousness about it is enough to enable the artists to exercise their potential in creation, the image, making tradition that could be recognized as the ethnic Khasi art if not the four part, because four part now it's not possible anymore, we don't have at all. So, the, the serious engagement on the cause is commendable, but actual situation and distinct character of the society could not be ignored with spontaneous visual bombardment by the present generous, uh, generation of artists that could contribute to the entire purpose of the endeavor. Perhaps the emerging and prevailing urban folklore in Shillong City could add certain elements that are relevant and sociable to the cause of the dynamic Khasi aesthetic identity. The ultimate vision is that the ignition is already sparked with the light in the visible at the end of the tunnel, which the present generation might not be able to relish the radiance of that Khasi ethnic art tradition. However, the sincerity, dedication and commitment to the cause of the present generation of artists may pave the way and set the path for the future generation to see the light of the day in the right direction. The relentless effort of today to look back at the ancient wisdom of the past will project the vibrant and dynamic tradition and shall serve for posterity. This endeavor is not the exclusive task of visual artists, what we feel. It's not only the visual art opportunity, but the participation and responsibility of every fellow of the community to strive for the ultimate objective of inclusive prospect in the vision statement for sustainable tradition of universal art consciousness about the Khasi community and the entire humanity. The day is not far when the Khasi ethnic art tradition will find a space in the vast horizon of universal cultural diversity. So this is a little presentation from my side. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's a few of the images that we uh, have done uh, pertaining to uh, all these aspects of uh, myths and legends of our Khasi society. This is the, the one that uh, our chief guest uh, commissioner was mentioning that we have done this mural at the 
entrance to the cultural complex, which we call the Central Library. Yeah. This is one of our, you know, Benedict and myself and you know, our artists are there, and we went to this because this also is part of the connection with the, you know, with the traditional role that is still here, and this is a place where we it has, uh, you know, some connection with our belief system. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, you, uh, now you see even, even, even in this kind of uh, wooden block where we use for, uh, we don't have any, you know, any design or any, uh, so, so that way our tradition doesn't have any image making tradition. Yeah. And this is, uh, I'm just trying to, uh, to portray also the effort that we have been doing throughout the years. Uh, where we have, uh, in this world also we have an uh, international participant. Here you will find this person is from uh, Thailand. And that, that time uh, he was, you know, uh, and this lady is a, is a folk person from here who, who are doing reading. They, so she doesn't know any language, any English, or uh, neither she know any Hindi. And he doesn't know uh, anything he knows in English, otherwise his own Thai language. But every evening they used to move around and then how, how they communicate, you don't know. So, so art is one medium that has bind them. Yeah. Uh, this is one of uh, Benedict's work. Yeah. It's a concern about our folk tradition. This is one of our activities that we are doing. This okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So you have to talk on that. Hello. Good afternoon, Lady and Chakanan. Uh, my name is Dr. Zubiya Shai Chalun from Faculty of Thai and Akai Art, Bangkok Thonburi University, Bangkok, Thailand. Uh, today I would like to present my painting creative of abstract painting series, Poems from the Field. Uh, the creation of abstract Abstract painting is poem from the field. Really, aim to study the theory and practice of abstract painting. That's the last word and image, with visual elements to a framework of creative and innovative analysis. Uh, the conceptual framework for creativity is based on the study and analysis of data inspiration and concepts. Then this to composition to create a painting that has a subjective don uh, denotation and connotation meaning. I also inspired by nature, observing phenomena uh, that trained by using grassland and the primary field of information. The idea is concept. The movement of the solving metal is writing, poetry, rhythm, and aesthetic. But painting is a problem that is not a word because it is a problem of reconstruction image. I feel that nature, I feel that nature is alive and moving. It's not different from a poem that has its own melody. Starting at the middle is poet mood in my imagination. I have a systematic creative process uh, divided into three paths. At first, in production, I review uh, literature. So production uh, is a process of production. Three, uh, I practice and exhibition. Uh, okay, there, there are three places of my painting's work. Painting in 2018 to 2019. This work is complete, abstract, connotations of peace and movement, forest and steam flowing from high mountains. This is a crayon on paper. Uh, this work is complete abstract connotation of peace and movement, middle and themes. Uh, both work are based on technique crayon on paper, which is a study of natural phenomena as a model. 
uh, pending in 2020, I began to develop from the, pre, uh, the concrete nature to the more abstract with the technique of acrylic on canvas, uh, uh, acrylic and pencil on paper. Uh, this work is like a nightmare on a middle in a dark night. This work is from the mountain with the wind. Uh, this work is reflection from the stream on glass at the end of the rainy season. Uh, three work uh, through online exhibition in uh, positive, positive energy high. Attending uh, India uh, 2020 to 2021, I play a painting as an abstract work with the technique of acrylic on canvas. I use the line and wave of the color as a highlight to express the wisdom and composition of picture to create a clear unity. This work is the series of a poem song on the nine middle. This is the uh, uh, island as a missile exhibition in Bangkok. Uh, this one is black sand in the night of yesterday. This work is when the sun is dark, the moon become dark and full of lonely truth of the middle on the day when fog and fall. And the last, this work is quality of the fields. The painting in this period have been synthesized from all creation and then reassembled then into abstract painting, expressing their own feeling about phenomenon of grass and into peace as providing rhythms. Uh, summary. In summary of my work and uh, the process of study, analysis and synthesis from data, knowledge, theory and practice leading to creation of unit abstract painting. I feel connect to natural phenomena that are different about able to coexist because the difference in the natural phenomena is unity in my itself. I think that I write poetry through painting and this view exhibition to public so that I can interpret, uh, I can interpret from the image and gain access to essence of my contemporary abstract painting. I would like to end this presentation. Thank you very much, Kao So, um, I'm Park, for Sorry for my long film name, but can you can call me Tipat? Um, proud and have a good um, trip in Bangkok too. So I will be presenting my hometown too as the um, capital of Thailand, but especially in the um, old town Bangkok. And it has been my very um, a long time work about the very basic skill of watercolor and um, okay. the, the objective of, of this study okay um, every time like we, we go out it's like um, three main areas and it's going to be in my boundaries of research the methodology that is um, before I go to uh, any places I will like, get more information, especially in the historical um, information. And also, this history will take me into the community and can have more like interview with the people in the community too. And I will have like in-depth information from them and know what exactly they want and also what exactly that changed themselves and what left in the communities. Um, the whole process of um, 
after research, this process will be just only in, in the middle, like in data collection, this one. So it's very, very like in the early process, but it can make some of the academic approach that I can um, transfer it to community and also to my students too. You will see the work um, after. This is the history of the area, but I'm not going to tell it all. <laughs> I will be very brief if the time is intense. Okay, um, I, I was like I'm starting with like uh, empty land of um, of the area, and I said from the history evidence that what happened in in the area. So we start with the, those temples and those the religion buildings that is like normally like set up the community after that. So next one is the mapping of ethnic states that um, show the diversity of um, Bangkok Old Town. This, this part is only one part up north from Bangkok Old Town. So we will see like a lot, a lot of ethnic states like Hainan Chinese, Khmer, Yuan, Laos, Malayu, Java, Mon, and also the some of the south part of um, southerners from Thailand too. And after that, the architecture that changed uh, from time to time it started like um, 18 uh, 1900. So the influence of Westerner and outsiders that came to Bangkok. And the idea of um, travel is just changed into road uh, road. So the river canals is just like um, complete, uh, not completely, but like slightly changed, like lazy portion. So the road is forming, forming the planning of uh, the land too. And it helps uh, it, it affects to some community that can be like lost and also like um, less, um, less visible. And also the palace set up there over there as well. So it changed um, the the land form too. And the and what left it showed the cultural heritage over here. And it will be the place that I go and take that um, activity. So I select all the sites from this highlight, like um, the colorful one, but it can be hardly seen. So these communities, like I, I, I go there and, and the choose which architecture can be the representative of the communities to show their identity and show their <coughs> value. And this one, I, I group it, I group it as the major construction. Like if Bangkok have that major construction, what community will be set up? come after that major construction. So it's Vasakke is here is the can be like assumption that it's gonna be the Sumeru mountain of Thailand. So when it was built the carpenter community set up around it. And it's still here, still there. But it's just like a list a little bit of like artisan. And next one also, when another palace built, Thompson Pier is set up as the community that trade in that hardware to build, uh, to build uh, those buildings, like all the sand, rock, wood, whatever. So this community is set up in that purpose. And the next one is the, the development from time to time in around like um, 1880, the entertainment um, come to not, not come, come to Bangkok, like emerge, obviously, in, in, in Bangkok. So we, we, we get a group of communities like Bangapu and Namlun, that is, can be like Thai, tradi uh, Thai traditional dancing, and also 70, Everything dancing like um, Sumba, something like that. So it's, it came to to Nanlen also. So this entertainment influence will um, 
set the identity of the communities too. So those um, architecture will show the value of this development. And actually, after this, the problem of communities is could be like the ur urban development that is don't really care about the community um, requirement or whatever, so it just um, changed their identity too. So some of the architecture just demolished after I went to draw it. So it could be some of the information that community can use and can have and can show the value to this one is demolished. And this temple is um, invisible, and no one knows about the history about that. So when I went there, and I, I like climbed the jetty and stupa, so I could, I could make some history for them, and they can use for their, for their tourist approach. Next one is the Buddhist Vedavanch. It's about religion as well. I would say that those um, communities set up something about the Buddhism that uh, support the monk outfit, all of them, like the monk bow, monk belt, and monk bows. So they set up around the main, this community set up around the main temple here that is supposed to be the middle of the old town Bangkok for communities. So I went there as well, and this place demolished already. So um, it's a shame, but well, anyway, if, if we could do something, this could be the tool for their conservation as well. Next one is Mr. Kham, is the Catholic um, community, which uh, set up like um, very early, like um, 700 something. So this one can be the evidence that um, the Catholic community set up there before Bangkok became capital. And no one uh, is still there. And when the pilots came to decide the community, this community is still there and it showed the importance of community that the pilots will not destroy them to build the pilots at the time. So it's still show. And this one is the temple of the oldest Hainan Chinese community in Bangkok. This one still show the architecture of the um, waterfront house and it's applied, changed to be the, 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 the land house. So this one is the all the side I have been through. It's not only the history and the old building that have been. I also like um, try to search for the new modern architecture as well. That is going to be like our heritage, and we can set some plan for them to manage in the future. So this is the expectation of the action that I have been doing. Is the this. Um, this activity that I hope that we're going to set some plan for community, preventing their demolition and also the community participation that um, can have the um, participation in the planning too. And also the, we, can, we could set some kind of like um, community classroom to give them a knowledge to manage and also to prepare before tourists come and change their identity. And also community awareness that we can raise it on. And after that, if we could do, we could set some community like based tourism and they can manage themselves and they can like put a uh, conservation concept themselves as well. And this is the work that um, showed uh, the map that apply to community, like to this map, and also the cultural map, and I um, changed it into some kind of like fine art work, and I show it when, when you came to Thailand. And this one I apply it to my class, 
is used in my students' work, and they can have the action with the local people too. And after that, if I don't go, students can go and have the relationship with the community by themselves. And sometimes they know what I mean now. Okay, so this is all that the work that I have been doing, and um, thank you very much. And please visit Bangkok sometime, and I can be the motorcycle rider for you, as you have been. Okay. And um, some drink, if, if you want to have like fresh drink, yes, no one. And me, always. Ulas. <laughs> all right, thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Thank you for the time and I think it is time to hosting and giving the chance to speak about the time, basically. So uh, this is this whole study uh, is a, a practice-based study. Also, most of the uh, part is my curatorial, which I conduct with my initiative called In Process Live Art Practice. So we do the performance art, live art, a uh, lot of curation with that. Also creating the archiving or uh, documentation on the performance art itself. So today I am going to uh, present performance art practice during the COVID-19 era. The mode, mode. So the whole, whole question was like why I am doing uh, you know, the on COVID-19 uh, and what is the uh, reason to do the some research on this Because uh, in COVID-19, during the COVID-19, one of the most uh, affected practice was the performing and performance art altogether. And uh, my my question was also, yes, even that period, the artists were so creative, they found out a different method and ways to execute them and communicate uh, their practice through the medium of uh, video, camera, and live stream. Okay, so I'm just going through the uh, quick uh, visual presentation, and there is some idea, and I did some interview, and still it's going on. So there will be uh, uh, some gap. Uh, so being as a performance artist, we, we, we primarily work with the body and you know, interaction with the audience and space, material. You know, these uh, three, four elements and time and space we always call for it's a very important and primary uh, aspect. I started observing this whole practice from the beginning. What happened? Uh, in, uh, we Beyond and Birch Collective is uh, based on Germany and uh, Belfast, Norway. So they always uh, they have worldwide call on performance art collective. Like they come together and perform. So uh, we 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 had a call and then suddenly everything is locked down and we have to like cancel everything. So so what happened like in India basically this this whole process. Of, 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 a research process also looking through the lens of South Asia and connecting the other part of the world because this practice was not in one space when we talk about the digital world. But what was the present uh, scenario in our country? And this is the very ironic, uh, you know, the uh, it, it can be one of the greatest performance in history and politics itself. And uh, one of the catastrophic uh, event of uh, uh, in, in human history, despite of you know the uh, prime minister called the world, uh, the India is a lockdown. Thousands of uh, mi migrant labor is starting departing from the metropolitan to their city. So this was the one of the first you know the my feet are hunger and you think COVID nineteen is what I feel. So this this quote severely hurts, you know. And then uh, immediately after you know the two day uh, 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 later, I I saw the one of the very important pioneer artists from India, 
uh, in the study, he started uh, his flag series, and he called uh, while I was interviewing, he called you know because of urgency of doing something and reflecting, I can't sit in a one square room, so I have to reflect something, even though it is it is not necessary to interact with anyone, but the medium have possibilities to interact with the other uh, who respond or who can. You know, receive this message. So he have a large series still then, and he is still going on. Uh, he is a poet, writer, performer, and painter as well. So it's about you know. The, so he is also like reflecting that moment, what is going on. You know, the migrant worker feels. So now, like uh, I will come to the the idea of body and avatar. And especially when we talk about the online uh, live streaming and online uh, projection and uh, uh, the work of uh, uh, you know the uh, in, in media media space. So body and avatar is, is a term we use for the digital media and uh, uh, augmented reality also or uh, also the AI like uh, artificial intelligence. Tarak is a, one of the very pioneer of uh, performance art who using the media, video projection and uh, technology with the body. Uh, his, his work is very extensive and very extreme in terms of uh, you know, experimenting the technology. Uh, this work is from uh, like 1995 when he using the video projection and uh, you know the uh, 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 telecasting the his image to the other audience. So you can see the history like how uh, uh, video medium and live streaming medium or camera intervening from them. So uh, for me, like uh, researching the you know the COVID-19 area and questioning what is the performance art and how it importance to connect with the audience. So I can find this few uh, element. Even if, if you go to the Star Art, his website, he is talk, he talk about the body and the reality uh, of body in digital space and also the post-human idea of the digital space. This was in 2016, I was in flash crisis. Uh, this is again one of the, uh, I was there uh, and I found one of my friends, uh, Chris. She was using the live streaming simultaneously, uh, using projection and uh, posting her uh, video at that time uh, on the social media. So, so this is one of the cases that is also like, I. Uh, it is it is on my on my knowledge where I find uh, using the live streaming and video projection uh, uh, with the body uh, on the social media it was not very new it was not very new but it was there and a pandemic uh, I will come uh, this this is uh, other case studies about the. Uh, so let's let's divide this idea. Like right? till then, I I had idea like projection, but uh, Srinagar Performance Milana in 2018 and uh, curator uh, 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 curator he is a Parvez based on India and uh, Switzerland. He curated this uh, uh, Srinagar Performance Milana. But what he did he did experiment with, with the performance art. And uh, he collaborated two city in a virtual space, and uh, he asked the audience and artists to perform. And there was the projection of the Basel in Bangalore, India. The uh, artists who were uh, performing there, he put the camera on, on in front of artists also and the audience also. So audience and artists both are projected uh, in, in, in Bangalore, and then Bangalore uh, they were doing performance. So their projection was in, in, in uh, Basel. So uh, I find this this project was very uh, uh, you know the ground of my thought process. 
give the more uh, possibilities to execute the idea and uh, how how uh, further uh, possibility possibilities of the media we can discover. And also, it's not about only the media, but also the questioning the 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 Western world and their uh, privilege, or also questioning ourselves as a body and a vigilance in a digital space. So this is one of artist Anupam Sahitya's work. Uh, I met Ali and Martin. He is uh, basically a Iranian artist, also based in Swiss. I met him in, uh, in 2019 in Pan-Asia. He was also uh, you know, experimenting with the camera and digital platform while he was uh, performing. So this was in 2014. So uh, this was me, like in Pan-Asia Performance Art Festival in ACC. Uh, I was I, I did uh, a three call because I was uh, uh, basically questioning the idea of space and time, and I was in ACC and simultaneously I, I called three friends, the performance artist, one philosopher in Vienna, and I was talking about the idea of space and time. So this was one of the experiments I was doing with uh, this. So okay. So after this is the this this image uh, struck me because uh, this is uh, from the uh, Belfast group of member for Nor uh, from Norway and she posted on 20th March it was the immediate lockdown we had in uh, in India and also in Europe it was uh, prohibited uh, to go anywhere. And on uh, a project Equinix was it, it, it was a part of Equinix, so it get more tension. But the image, you know, this it, it speaks a lot. Then uh, we came up uh, come up with the idea of curatorial, uh, uh, which which we call a room of thoughts. So we were three four collaborators, and we started. Uh, uh, you know the looking how we can uh, curate uh, the performance art on online platform, and this was one of the very first curatorial uh, we did uh, with in process. And uh, more about like uh, we are uh, co collecting the South Asian uh, performance artists from Pakistan and uh, other New Zealand. Also, there was a part of uh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and uh, all, most of the South Asian part. But uh, while I was I was uh, uh, interviewing the artist Dimple <coughs> Sar, he is one of the very important artist performance artist in India also. So she quoted like in her interview like you know the uh, square space of six by six meter become the new possibilities. We put limitation that give uh, us more possibilities to explore camera and body in restrictions. So she said like, okay, like it was the condition, but what can I do? Like I have to reflect. So I was exploring the space and camera. This was uh, uh, me and Jihong Park. Uh, in, uh, it was again one other uh, curatorial we are doing uh, since 2018, place where we live. But this place is sector 26 in Chandigarh. And you know the once you go in this place you can't believe because in India it's a thousand of people at one place it's a super crowded but uh, while we are uh, going here like we find complete empty space uh, also the doing anything it was really very really hard because you know the police can come and just uh, bug you any so this we did. Uh, in in during the lockdown and initially experiment with the uh, multiple performance in Zoom platform come up with the uh, Vivian uh, Belfast and they uh, start calling this kind of uh, Zoom performance. So I divided this whole research in a three phase and then other uh, individual uh, performance practice. 
where we see the first phase is completely locked down, giving the complete lockdown. Second is the you know the mind lockdown, and third is is like you know we have a lot of freedom in a certain uh, rule. So this was the complete lockdown period performances from the B beyond, and they have an international call. Again, then we did a project with Power New Zealand. Basically, we uh, I was thinking like, okay, uh, I was little bit, uh, you know, the, you can say uh, old school. I, I, I don't wanted to go online too much. I restricted myself rather than going to the place and interacting the uh, people. So I was thinking other way to execute the performance art and I find like doing archiving is a, one of the important. And luckily I got the chance from the New Zealand, one of my uh, friend offered me to curate the live art, uh, you know, live art in New Zealand. So I said like, okay, we can do it. And it was a new idea for me to curating the live art performance during this pandemic. And we did the whole archiving of one year, uh, whatever we did with the uh, in process. And uh, uh, so we published one book. And then we called 10 artists who were working in a public space and their idea was public versus private. So we called 10 artists, 10 artists uh, who were working in a public space that time also and then some artists who were working in a room space. So this was like two uh, images you can say. So we uh, sent them the video file every, uh, you know, the exhibition plan and according to that they they made it. Uh, uh, other initiative I, I say is Lock Unlock, which is from the one of uh, German uh, uh, artists and uh, Indian artists together and one of Mexican artists. So this was formed after the second uh, lockdown and they started uh, calling. So their method was different. It's not like, you know, they just call the Zoom and you do the performance and uh, finish your performance. They give some idea and share the idea and according to that they give the object and they come in one day and they perform. Later, after one week, they come again and discuss what happened. So this is, uh, there are a few images while they are doing and while they are discussing. This uh, one of, uh, again, this, this is a different method than other because it was the relay performance, 24 hour relay performance and it is from the Busan. Uh, Sun Ming, uh, he, he is the curator based on Busan. Uh, he called uh, Jehong to do a relay performance. So I find this idea was also interesting because they, they are, we all are uh, communicating with a uh, different time zone. So uh, we had to like wake up at 4 because our schedule was that time and we started in the cold winter uh, doing performance. So for me like uh, I don't know how much it worked with the online things but it worked with us uh, while we are doing. So also the idea gave us the possibilities to explore the you know the my own idea how can extend and how we can extend in a uh, next place. Uh, Marita Bulbin is a, she is also she is also the founder of Poets Collective. But I find his idea is quite interesting because she locked in her himself in a one uh, uh, room and uh, she uh, she was uh, performing with the audience in German. This is other uh, performance of her. So I find this also, this technique was also one of the way to execute the performance with the public. Okay, so here is Indra Sarin. Uh, Indra Sarin is also uh, like, he got the chance with the Ishara Foundation to work. And in that complete lockdown, he started, uh, you know, uh, going all around the the city and start performing and documenting his performance. Okay.
This is a later work of Ibis. So he did three, four type of work, which is one is doing with lock and lock, one is doing flag, one is going to the outer space, and one, this is his terrace, he just worked with his terrace. So we can find the three other different types of method of one artist. Also, uh, in, in that complete lockdown, we see the how, um, what is, what happened in Myanmar and uh, how performance art uh, becomes one of the very expressive tools to uh, communicate with the larger audience and public. So, I, uh, in process was the part of uh, uh, a transmission correlation and we, we had a call. It, it was almost uh, 58 uh, artist group from all, the, all over the world. We contributed and then also to support the whole Yeah, 
of analysis has been adopted. The present study is concerned both the primary and secondary data. So I have worked for the local portals because a portals give a uh, portals is uh, only the sources within both the villages they give you the information. So uh, we have thought that to both the villages not like an artist, like a common people. Because if you don't connect to the local people, uh, they will not give you the information in a uh, very, uh, very, small, uh, very, uh, in say, very emotional way. So we go like a um, common people to village to take the interviews. So uh, I have got lots of input to, uh, 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 sorry, while discussing their interviews. So uh, the portal of Assam, basically uh, we can say in Assam, Bengal and Tripura. So there are no such Kumars and the upper Assam is called the Hiras. So uh, there are lots of people still are practicing. But I found the lack is that they are just practicing. Government are doing farms and they are making the workshop is okay. But what about the uh, aesthetical representation in the point of the artistic uh, artistic view? Because they are making a point and now it is 21st century, you know the technological sound. But what about them? So is making the code and doing exhibition workshop, I think that is it, it never help, never help them. So uh, and again thing is that uh, if we compare uh, the technologies, like looking about the performance art and uh, lots of things, how could uh, we can uh, manage them in our art forms? So uh, it's very important because I have got it uh, in 1981. I will discuss about that. Sir Edward Albert Gate mentioned that a real Kumar and Kulala is a class of Navar uh, Navasaksha group where daily quarters of Kalita and two class of Bon Patra So uh, in Bengali terms, man is Kumar. Kumar means two in Assam is different languages. In uh, Northeast, sorry, in Bodhapuri is a different languages. In uh, Bodhapuri known as their uh, Rudrapa. Rudra means Shiva. So they believe that the Rudra is come from the Shivas. So uh, they uh, they took the name there uh, from the Rudra Pala. So this is the like lots of uh, Sanskrit tags and the mythology and concepts are there. But they believe and they start being uh, worse till now. So uh, the hero community also there is a uh, story because I go through the some books. It is called the uh, Hira Ambrogar in Assamese books. So I am very fortunate that I don't know Assamese language. When uh, you know, come to Guwahati, I managed myself to learn the Assamese and studying the Assamese text because there's lots of things to be explored in Assam. Uh, in English, uh, sorry, in English, because we have to be brought to international, uh, sorry, uh, we have to be brought to the international market. So in here, uh, they believe that they are the origins of the Assam, but the story is that I got uh, in Odisha means around 200 or uh, more than uh, 1000 years ago. Uh, the name is that. Uh, Maha, sorry, Mahendra Mahapatra and Hira Devi. So this terminology has come from the Hira Protas. Because in these books, uh, the writers has mentioned everything in very detail. So how, it is, uh, how much is uh, right, I don't know about it. But the book has written when the, uh, they came in Kamaikha temple to worship, uh, to know about the Kamaikha Darshan, means to know about the, uh, take the blessings of Kamaikha temple. But uh, Mahendra Mahapatra, he demised, uh, um, demised and after the Hira, uh, sorry, Hira Devi was so so pathetic in that, uh, in that time, she never managed to go back to Odisha again. So she managed herself uh, with uh, her two children, uh, this is a Maha, uh, Tathyan Mahapatra and Gobal Mahapatra, they arranged there and I, uh, I found that this is the tradition of the Hira communities. So they are making their tradition. But interesting fact is that Hira portals are making their portraits by beating the hand and Kumar are using the wheel. So uh, uh, also I found that very interesting thing is that uh, Hira community peoples are using the special clay. This is called Hiramati. Uh, this is dark under the from the uh, underground dark. So and Kumar, they just collected the soil from the river soil. So the comparison of these soils are uh, they are very uh, blackish in nature. Of the Hiram community are very sticky in nature, and the uh, Kumar was also their uh, clay is very latest type. In Bodhapuri, also we have lots of clay uh, glass uh, models are available, so potters are making their potters very easily. So I am not going to discuss uh, because the story is you know what we mean by pores to keep a things and things to keep. So according to Hindu mythology, the need for a such thing was came to necessary to contain a nature and make the force immortal for all time. So uh, and the container uh, 
was known as Amrita Kumbha. This is a Hindu text, you know, that uh, Shiva, sorry, uh, when the Vishnu hold the nectar, uh, uh, sorry, in the Talha. So means the poet is very ancient tradition from uh, Indian perspective and the world's perspective too. So uh, there is a lot of beliefs and social cultural content uh, because in my farm they are so they are making the utensils for the household purposes or the decorative purposes. In Bharatpur we have observed uh, they are making their musical instrument too because uh, they make the tabla and the khol a different musical instrument by their but they are making with the clay only. So that directly going to the uh, port so you will understand about that. So, uh, See the visual uh, impressions. They are simply done by the local porters and the, uh, the designs. These are spontaneous. No need to do anything if you expect, no need to read anything. They are their regular practices. So we have been seen in the Chinese civilizations like the uh, ports are there, but how is they when they are making these traditions alive? So there are different types of diyas they are making, but uh, I, I believe that they are the real artists because the transformations without taking any sketches, drawings, how they are making these things, very challenging. So these are called diyas in, uh, in Indian languages and they are using a different aspects on that. So uh, there are different types of uh, glasses they are using for the uh, festivals as well as drinking water on that. So I am talking about the Kumar community porters. So uh, this is, I just mesmerized, I just visited in Marjuri. So I just found the Kumar porters. <laughs> they uh, bind the port in such a way, so it's big, uh, it looks like a architectural designs. See, this is how they are maintaining these things. So I am just going to plan that how this involves this community into the visual art forms. So this is a simple hand press object, they are just uh, offering, means it's for other this hand they are using. But I found an interesting aspect on them, the face. So it is simple, by using the doors, by using the pan like that. Uh, this is the earthen lamp, uh, they, the tap lamp, because there is no, uh, I have visited there, there is no electricity is there. So they use the kerosene and the lamps only. In Bharatpuri, uh, they use uh, this kind of force because and uh, Kumar Rudrapa, they are they are practicing. They are much more practicing artists. So they are the uh, ports and designs are there. Uh, actually, you know about the purpose, so I am not going to explain anything. See, this is the their vias uh, because even and very interesting is that uh, they will not give you all the materials because they believe not to give all the materials to the outsiders. So this keep it preserved, so I have just managed to take the photographs. <coughs> so uh, in Gira community uh, and the Kumar of uh, upper community, uh, upper Assam, only the women make this kind of uh, utensils. May, may just work on hiding process and the collecting the raw materials. But in Puratini, all things are done by the men. Women are just assisting. So this is the big uh, comparative study I have got it uh, through my research. It is still are going on, it's not over. So uh, this is I we have arranged a workshop in Silchar uh, before I came to Guwahati. So I just uh, do one thing, our design and their skill, how how, how it works. So I go through the research and then I found that they are being so playfully because they know uh, they are uh, they are much more experts than us. So they are just simply making up, uh, means you just make it, they are making these things. So everybody is just giving their designs. So uh, we have sold in the market, I am just trying to do in Guwahati because I am I'm in, I am sorry, uh, Pentiping has done lots of uh, getting on that. So uh, we are also working on this to help this product communities too. So a conclusion uh, is not, uh, it is not conclusion at all, uh, because uh, they need support, they are believe. They need some this. They need the artistic artist because artist has emotions to think about it. So artist has some connectivity to connect with them. Because I believe uh, if you lose your culture, you lose your identity. So you have to understand your culture first. 
So uh, because art doesn't mean that uh, according to not to me actually, I believe uh, you have to be uh, understand about roots and your culture. And this is our culture and preserve it. So this is how the people will come and then you have to be exhibited. So people know they know this is the region of the cultures. So uh, uh, these are again decline. Another reason is that the arrival of the plastics. So I just thanks to government right now. In March July, people are going to ban the plastics. So they they can get some of the uh, bread and butter for their uh, sources. So this is my references. Uh, it's still an ongoing process because of uh, uh, because of data collecting data till now. Thank you for us. Uh, so for giving your uh, valuable time for me. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Good afternoon to all the participants. Uh, uh, very, first of all, I'd like to thank the team of the Positive Energy Art Foundation and the ICCR, ICSSR sorry, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I'll try to be as brief as uh, possible. So the topic uh, that I'm going to my paper is about is the Progressive connection of the emergence of classic contemporary art requests for visual identity. So, uh, before I go to that, I'd also like to continue the line from which is just quoted just now by Dr. Ishan Bhakti. If you lose your identity, you lose your culture. So, as a uh, practicing artist, uh, I I'm doing a research on the, uh, my topic is a cultural uh, representation of classic culture and visual art. So, in this connection, I have, uh, uh, I'll first show you, like, uh, you see, like, it's very interesting, like, how do we achieve that visual identity? Because as an artist, we are very limited in our vocabulary. So, we got only the you know, the elements of uh, uh, visual art, which, uh, which are the lines, the colors, the shape, the texture, the form, the value. But, uh, but the interesting thing is that, like, how each culture has come up with a uniqueness or a kind of uh, something, a characteristic. Like, for example, the, the lines of the oriental world, the, the Chinese art, the Japanese art, is different from the lines of the Indian art, you see, like, and also like uh, the line of, uh, like, if you see that abstract expressionism, uh, expressionism of Jackson Pollock or uh, Frank uh, Klein, also, they have got a different kind of energy. And I guess that the line is the same, but it is the, it is atmosphere, it is the cultural background that molded the artist to produce those lines. So, uh, before I go, I will uh, show you this. So this is, uh, I think, uh, my friend, uh, artist, Barafel has already shown you are familiar with these. In our classic tradition, we are very rich in, in, in uh, music tradition. But unfortunately, <coughs> we, are, we don't have a visual art uh, tradition. Okay. Visual culture is there, but we don't have a tradition. So these are the stones, <coughs> which is found in Nartya, and that which resembles the, you can see the stone hinge of uh, you know, Wales of Scotland. So here also, the uh, Bedding Crown Festival, and these are the black tear pottery from Larnai, and here the weaving from the Hoi area. So you can see here, Though we don't have a uh, you know, uh, image making tradition yet, by the, uh, coming to you know, in contact with the neighboring community, we have invited those uh, culture of you know the, like this uh, what, what we call rat. We call it khasi rat, but it is actually it comes from the word rat, which is you know connected with rat yatra. So this is an indigenous festival which we have, say, uh, you know, uh, put it to make it into our own. So here also the uh, uh, textile design, which are uh, basically not in our tradition, but 
people of Ontario and every community and, and people, we have started to assimilate that in our uh, culture. So, actually, art cannot, I, I believe that art cannot just grow in a vacuum. So, and also, as an artist, I think you can go to this beautiful writing by this uh, modern song. He's an uh, art uh, educator, researcher, and also I, I agree with him because uh, you see, like, uh, I've interviewed, uh, from my research, I've interviewed some, a group of artists uh, whether we need to reflect our cultural background in, in our artwork. And this is in the context of the Kasi artists in which I've uh, sent the questionnaires. 60% say yes, while 30% they say it's not necessary, and 10% say no. So this is a very rough, because it is a very subjective matter, but uh, still then, we, despite the fact that we don't have an art tradition, so, so to say, in the visual art tradition, yet with the coming of the missionaries and the church paintings, there is, you know, an art practice. And it is very recent. Maybe if you can, we can think like the, uh, the coming of the missionaries of the 1840s, we started literature. That also, we don't have scripts. So our, though our uh, oral tradition is very old, but we don't have a literature in written form. So it's only after the coming of Thomas Jones that we use a Roman script. So after that, it was in the ninth, maybe 19, so 40s or 50s, you know, like when the church painting started. Then now in 2000, in 1990, in the 80s and the 90s, we get images like this. So it's, it's like you can understand that throughout the world there's an evolution of art from one area to another. Like from the folk, it goes to the classical, from the classical to the romanticism, and that's so on and so forth. But from in here in Shalom, in the, uh, in, the, in the context of Kasi artists, everything is happening within a span of say 20 years. So it is, it's like, uh, you can say, with the coming of the globalization and uh, the booming of the internet. So in a span of 20 years, you can, you, you know, there's a cauldron of uh, artistic activities ranging from realism to Hyperrealism, abstract, street art, public art, installation art, digital art, etc. So uh, here I like to, but my here I'm going to concentrate only artists who had somehow uh, work. Their works are connected with our folklore. So this is the work of Barafel who has presented the paper. This is uh, he deals with the uh, cosmogony. This is how. Our folklore, we have got a, a bit, uh, you know, our Christian myth is that the Khasis, we come from heaven. There is a story that, you know, the, uh, there were nine above and seven below. Before, uh, nine and seventeen used to stay in heaven. So, uh, I think I've got time to tell the story like that. Is it okay? So, uh, seven hearts, they descended into God sent the seven hearts to take care of the earth, to plow the land, to do agriculture, and at night they go back. So, but uh, afterwards, slowly, slowly, they, the seven uh, huts, they settle down, and the nines remain. And there's this, a very interesting story about the dengue. And, uh, this is a golden, uh, we call it a jinki a golden ladder, which is uh, connected with mounds, or uh, loads of pitmen. Loads of pitmen is a, uh, you know, it's an uh, existing mountain till now, which is uh, the origin of Kasi, you can say, myth. And there also there's a dinye, which is a tree. And the literal uh, translation of Lums of it name means a mountain which has, in which its neighbor is connected with heaven. So uh, you'll see some other work also in which deals with that. So suddenly, but, uh, the story is long, I wouldn't have the time, but uh, somebody, you know, poisoned them to cut the tree. You know, that the tree is actually is a symbolic connection between heaven and earth. 
but uh, due to some, you know, um, uh, maybe sins or wrongdoings of the people, they, they cut the, the tree, and the distance between the earth and the heaven becomes more. So now it's only the Khasi believe it's only through the sacrifice which which they can get an answer from heaven. In which uh, I think Bharata also has shown that uh, we call it uh, egg divination. Egg divination is a is a form of uh, reading the message by breaking the egg in a specially uh, made plank, wooden plank. And that plan also it has to be made from the tree which has been struck by lightning. So you can see the connection. The Kasi worldview and the Kasi view is very strong connection between the heaven and the earth. So I'll go to the next slide. Here also is the same painting about her, but I think in the span of uh, 10 years, he has revisited the same subject, but he added more elements here. So the story of the Daniel and Giant Tree. This is a, a which I just mentioned uh, just now. This maybe symbolically represents that golden bridge. So this is heaven. And the rooster also fish a very important So here like so I'll go for that. Next slide. Okay, another artist which uh, is carrying Lamsi. She has worked a lot with the uh, uh, Four times. And this is called a conversation. Here is uh, you know it shows uh, you know, the oral tradition which is being passed on from maybe the uh, mother or the grandmother to her children. So this is a very intimate space in the sorry in the Kasi architecture. We call it Kalimpe. It's a, it's a space where where they, they converse, they tell stories, they share their feelings and their hardships. So, so this is the work of it's a diptych which is drawing uh, into two parts. So I'll go to the next slide. And this is the story about the North Karikai. It's a quite a gruesome story. So here it is uh, actually the Kari this, this this one has an illustration. But this one, if you if you uh, get a chance you can read about the story, it's about how this woman is, uh, you know, by accidentally, without her knowledge, she ate her own child. Because her stepfather mothered the child, and it's a very gruesome story, and she, then this lady, after she realized, when she went to eat betel, that she found a small finger in, in the betel basket, and then she became, you know, like, uh, mad, because she can't believe that she has eaten her own child, and she went and she jumped from the fall. So till now that fall is there, maybe if you go to South Chalabhanji, you'll be seeing that it's called No Kali Kali Fall. That is connected with this story. So here also, like uh, maybe you can see here, it's a kind of, uh, I think today also, uh, Sir Frederick, when he talked about the root bridge, you know, how the, uh, the bioengineering technique of the Kasi's in which uh, you know they use the roots to connect from one end to another end. So here are some artists, maybe carrying this. This is a mind state. She's trying to connect the past. Okay, this is also the same story. Yeah, this is the uh, work of Trevor uh, Mordom. And uh, this is the story about Sir Asar. Uh, if you have time, I can I narrate this story? Uh, the work is uh, based on the folklore of Sri Labaran. The brief outline of the story describes a young stag. This uh, young stag who lived with his mother in the plains beneath the Khasi hills. They lived happily together until one day he was awakened by the spirit of adventure to explore the lofty Khasi hills in search of a tasty, tender, grass in Jano in Japan. He had heard so much. He decided to venture into this foreign land despite his mother's plea not to leave her. Once he reached those hills, he was overjoyed to greet the cool air, fresh air and ran wildly, trampling the cultivating areas of the native Khasi tribe. 
The Kasi hunters finally shut him down. His loud, tragic cry was sounding throughout the hills and plains. When his mother heard this cry sound, she knew it was something she wished it never happened. She searched for the young stag, and when she found him lying in a pool of blood, she was devastated and cried out loudly. Her wailing song touched and significantly moved the people around her. And it is said that this is the first time the Khasis understood the depth of a wailing song. I think some, in some literature it's written that this is the first time the Khasis learned how to cry. Okay. So there are many versions of the story. So here I like to uh, tell you, like, you know, uh, in the search for a visual identity, since we don't have uh, an art tradition of our own, we are the artists are looking from you know. Different sources for inspiration. So in that way, there is like a kind of uh, you can say influences or eclecticism uh, or a fusion. So here also, I think uh, I'll go to the next slide. Uh, and all this happens because I think these artists, once they go to study fine art, they get uh, you know accustomed and they get familiarized with all the different isms of the world. You know. The different uh, art movements and all. And I think it is these uh, knowledge which uh, they try to look at their own culture and I, they try to, you know, to apply it or maybe to uh, do something which will reflect the cultural background of their own. So here the next slide is there's a Persian miniature, the hunting scene. So you can see though Trevor he didn't use the decorative elements here. It's like uh, almost one promotion. It's not colorful as a version. But yet, the, the use of the golden sky and this vegetations here are from maybe his influence from the Persian miniature. Because in Shatarikta, we have got the miniature copy tradition, so in which we have to copy the uh, you know, Mughal miniature or the Bari miniature. So, Another artist that I'm going to speak about is like uh, Nafi Sadyan Kamur. She also she's a very young artist. She passed out from Shantideven. So here you can see her approach is uh, very, very contemporary because uh, she just recently passed from there. And this is also about the story about Mahmud Bir Mahmud Mah. Mahmud Bir Mahmud Mah. This is a story about a stone which uh, swallows one child. Okay, this is also based on the folklore. But uh, what I like about the Nafi Sajan's work is that she has, uh, though she has used this, the, the narrative of the folklore as a background, but she has given it a contemporary, you know, like she has touched the contemporary issue of, uh, you know, of uh, environmental issues. And if you go around Shiraz, you'll see that there is a dampened uh, cutting down of uh, you know, destruction of uh, trees and boulders and rocks. So in this story, that story, the stone has swallowed the human being, and here it is a stone that will swallow the human beings. You know, it's like it's a part of that you know interchange kind of thing. Yeah, I'll come to the conclusion. So here is a big game, the same giant tree, which. Uh, she has represented it in a different way. The tree is not there, but some kind of spiritual connection because until now, there is an annual pilgrimage of the Khasis to visit the top of the southern main mountain. Okay. And here is a Mario Patal, a very young artist. He's an architect by, by he's trained as an architect, but he has a lot of work with this. So he has uh, he is influenced from the art logo. You see, like you know, maybe Gustav Kim or uh, Alphonse Muka, his work. And you can find the similarity in the connection between the use of light and those decorative elements. So, here also, he did a story about uh, Money Graton. Money Graton is a legendary fruit player of the Khasis. So, I'll conclude. So, we'll see, uh, we see that uh, there's. Uh, in, the, in this process, in this time span of 
maybe 25 to 30 years, there is uh, a kind of a quest for a visual identity which maybe later on it can be identified or read as a, you know, a khasi art. So uh, with these few words, I will continue with this. So it's a, it's a process of evolving. So we should think instead of identity as a production, which is never complete, always in process. Thank you very much. Uh, without further ado, I would like to call Dr. Prakash Shishu for the report, please. So many different things about the different cultural aspects from Thailand also and of course from the Meghalaya also. And though it is, you all are visiting Meghalaya, so it's these papers we are really, really important for all of us so that we can understand the cultural aspects of Meghalaya, right? So start. So I will start from Dr. Surya, and uh, he presented a paper on creative process of abstract painting series poems from the fields. One thing is very sure that abstract painting is always having a very deep meaning in it. Rather, we don't see any you know identified image. We see the abstraction, but. From his works, we can always understand the way his processing for each and individual artwork is very important. He talked about the relationship of word and images which he represents in his artworks. The way he has conceptualized the whole painting and the conceptual framework emphasized upon the importance of the process for any abstract painting. As we know, when we saw his works, there was a lot of movement in his works because his inspiration is the nature and he talked about the grassland because when we talk the grassland it's you see always there's a wind and it's always a movement which I could identify the movement in his paintings also. One very remarkable thing which we came to know through his paintings that he is into a very systematic process from where he's thinking about the pre-production then the production and then the post-production and I think the third one is very very important to understand the value of post-production you know once because these two the pre-production and the production when it's done the most important part is how to reach to the right audience and there the post-production values a lot so when we see his works in here divided into three phases like 2018 to 19 and uh, from 20 and then 20 to 21 where from the 19 we see is after 19 we see some uses of colors also and the very spontaneity in his works also and which was really really like we appreciate your work a lot and the process also and we, really, we are really thankful to you for presenting your work and the paper and enlightened us with the process towards abstract painting. Thank you so much. Next, Mr. Pipak from Radhaabad University. And uh, we really enjoyed your presentation and you have really taken us to the different parts of Bangkok. And uh, his paper was Directives of Community Settlements in Early to Mid Ratna Kosin Period by Ardo Sketches. And uh, this Ratna Kosin the period when Bangkok became capital. That was the period and uh, that was is really informative because I have heard this word before also but I never understood what it means. So uh, thank you so much for this information. His work has a purpose. It's not simple an outdoor study. As an artist, we always think about doing an outdoor studies, right? And we have always done it also. But outdoor study which Pipak is doing is having a very different angle. He has a very different uh, approach towards the outdoor study, which we came to know through your study, through your presentation also. And where he talks about the purpose. The purpose is like study the history, aesthetics, the participation of community. That is a very important thing when we are doing a study in the public places and outdoor studies. Again, he talked about the methodology where the first and foremost information which he talked about the historical information like wherever you went you first tried to get the historical information and then to perform the creation over there at that space 
and then utilizing the space creating a history which may be destroyed and which has been destroyed later which you have just showed that you went and you did some study work there and later when you went again it was destroyed so now you have you know documented a history through the work and which is the sole purpose of your outdoor study and the architectural difference the transformation of during the time it has changed a lot so transformation of uh, architecture from time to time due to development which has changed the identity of the place also so in all this presentation we came to know that the importance of place the documentation part the you know transformation part and how a simple art work can become a history so that we really enjoyed from your presentation and we are really thankful to you for your invitation to the highland and the drinks of you said <laughs> <laughs> so, coming next to Ajay Kumar Sarma, Assistant Professor Chitkara University. So, we are totally like very, very thankful to you for taking us to the whole journey of COVID-19 and the performance art. Because we all know COVID-19 during that two years, it was very tough for each and everyone because the first and foremost thing everyone was thinking of surviving, you know. But during that time also, there were people, you know, who were thinking of the society also and they were simultaneously going with their daily life activities. So, his topic was performing performance art during COVID-19 era, analyzing the mood and methods of life performance art. So, when we talk about the performance art, he will talk about the body space and uh, the most important utilizing of time and space. During that time, it was not possible to go everywhere into to the physical performance. So the virtual world played an important role. And that's how his presentation has taken us towards the whole journey. Like how the importance of virtual world has connected people from different world and how they have been utilizing that platform into the performance area. The first and foremost image which he showed about the migrant workers that indeed was a touching one because India was going through a very pathetic situation suddenly and thousands and thousands of migrant work, work, workers were going back home. Suddenly there was a lockdown and everyone was stuck at their place including me also. I was stuck alone for three months and definitely when you go through that phases your psychology changes you know. So as a performance artist he has through the, like, through the images the impact of COVID-19 and the migrant workers feed through various works by Indra Salim also. So when we talk about, and uh, later he talked about in series of body and avatar, right, where he included the media, then the installation, the videos and uh, body like all together in one place, the multiple, you know, use of <clears throat> multiple artificial intelligence at the same time at the same place. So that is how the interconnection of different world was done during these performances and uh, the, utilize, the right utilization of the virtual world was taking place during his performances. He also showed some images from the issues from Myanmar which we all know that simultaneously that time only it was going on and how the performing artists they highlighted the issue in a right manner and the masses went directly to the world. So here the term time and space has been utilized by the performing artists where they emphasized on the current on the situation and they realized and then they made it available for the public in different spaces at different type through the virtual platform. So that is one of the remarkable thing which we have come across from the presentation of Ajay Kumar Sarma. And we have seen that he is also included in so many performances and the social issues and we reacted to those issues which includes the issues of Sindhu border and uh, that, that was a great like very vital issue going on in India during, almost during the end of the lockdown and the farmers and Indian government were having a clash over a rule. So, 
in that situation also when an artist is reaching there and trying to be a part of it because sometimes you are not doing the performance sometimes the life life which is going on is, it becomes your performance it is your performance the daily life is your performance and that's what we came to know about from the Shindu Isu's performance so highlighting the issues through performance and connection with the society is a very important part which he has emphasized through his, his uh, presentation and uh, we are really thankful to you for taking us with your beautiful journey through your presentation. Thank you so much. Coming next to Kishan Bhakti, he is from Royal School of Arts and uh, <coughs> from Global, Royal Global University, Guwahati and uh, his topic was Terracotta Portraits of Hira Kumar and Rudrapal Community of Assam, a virtual perspective. He really talked about the originality of the potter from Assam and the condition which is going on now. Because what he said that now like plastic has taken over and uh, the real potters, you know, they are slowly stopped. They had already stopped doing it because there is a less demand in the market. So starting from the <coughs> starting from his uh, paper, he always talked about the searching for local identities and uh, the discovery of the pottery in Assam. So he emphasized on the four types of pottery which has been done in Assam, and uh, it's a really great job of uh, finding the roots from your culture and re-establishing it into the contemporary era. So. One thing he was talking about that how to get the right information from the local people. So there you have to be a local to get the information from the local people. And that is the right way when we approach people like their own, we get the right information. So he was talking about the Hira Potter and the Kumar also where he told, where he said that Hira Potter used the process, different process, it's a beating process. They put in a coil and they beat it and they make the pottery. Whereas the Kumhar, they go on the wheel process, which is very contemporary. So see, there is a difference between the traditional process and the development in the traditional process because from one place they have shifted to the another and use our technology to it. So <coughs> that was really insightful towards the pottery tradition in Assam, where various designs by are used by local potters and the traditions. And very important thing which is talking about the understanding and preserving the culture is the most important thing and we all realize that our identity is in our culture right if we don't have a culture we don't have an identity and that's the true thing that i think somehow it has come across the cross cultural identities where culture is also there and we're talking about the identity also so thank you so much kisan Bhakti, for taking for your wonderful presentation and uh, you are doing a great job because this potters in Assam, they really need to be, you know, come highlight and their tradition needs to be alive. So thank you so much. So coming to our last presentation by <coughs> Benedict Kemlan from Nehu University only. He is the assistant professor in this university only from Creative Arts Department. And uh, the first and foremost thing, thank you for this for telling us about the Khasi culture. Because our guests, our international and national participants, they need to know about what is Khasi culture. You know, Meghalaya is a very cultural place, okay, and it has a very different culture from other parts of India. So, the way Benedict has taken us towards the cultural thing has really given very right information to all of us. His topic was folkloristic, connection in the emergence of Harsi contemporary art, the quest for visual art identity. And he started saying that uh, we don't, we never had a visual art in our culture. So, but the most, uh, but the significant part is that we, Khasi tradition has always have a visual, <coughs> that cultural traditions rather than visual art, they have always cultural traditions which he has emphasized. So, he was talking about the importance of lines, you were talking about the importance of lines which comes from the art practice 
and it's how it is different from India, China, and Japan. Each an individual artist has their own line, and it comes from their personal cultural traditions only. So, what he emphasized on that Khasi in Khasi tradition, there is no image making, right? There is no image making process, but there are so many cultural practices which are going on and which has developed itself an indigenous art practices in the state. So that is one of the most important thing we need to understand that if we are not having history also, we are on the verge of creating history. So that is a very important thing which we have got from his presentation and he has, you know, he told us about so many Kasi stories about the Nawakalikai Falls also and the how the local artists they are utilizing and they are focusing on the local and traditional aspects of Khasi culture and they are following the stories also and that is one of the remark most remarkable thing that we are you are working very very hard on your cultural aspects and you are trying to bring that forth in forefront of the community. So and the, the quest for Khasi identity for and the visual identity in Khasi art so the process is still going on and all the artists in this state they are doing their best to establish a Khasi art tradition and I am sure that it's going to be established. It has already been established and it's flourishing all over India and the world also. So once again I thank you so much Benedict Skamlan for your wonderful presentation and uh, so today we had total nine presentations and uh, I'm really happy and really glad that we all have shared our knowledge, we have shared our cultural aspect, we have shared our experiences and our art with all of us and definitely it has, the, all the papers has given us something to understand, something to learn and something to carry again with us back when we are at our place. So I, from the bottom of my heart, I thank all and every participant who has presented here and a great thank you to all of you. Thank you so much. Finally, we have come to the last day, and uh, I am in the last day or uh, last hour of this day. So, indulge me. It was a very engaging day, but then indulge me five minutes because it's not just an organizing sketchery, but you know we have a huge team behind whom you haven't heard of and who actually put this function together. So, but first and foremost, on behalf of the Positive Energy Art Foundation and all the team, I would like to extend a very hearty vote of thanks to the chief guest, Sri Frederick Roy Kumar, for sparing his valuable time to grace us this morning. My heartfelt gratitude also goes to the Honorable Director, ICSSR NERC, Professor B. Panda, for collaborating with us and making this workshop a successful one. He has continuously supported us, advised us, and greatly helped toward the successful of this first day program. Uh, I'm also very much thankful to the resource person, Sri Ratal Rajuri and Dr. Nabajit Deka, who in a very short time period, uh, you know, in invitation, they have come and grace us with their uh, you know, enthusiastic participation in this workshop. My word of thanks also goes to the ICSSR NC NERC team, uh, Dr. Batseba G. Pongro, uh, Thangboy uh, Pai Tei, Timberly, Bibla, Kolari Lindo, and all the members of their endless support and guidance. My thanks also goes to all the participants and the presenter who have attended this workshop and who has exceptionally presented their creativity. Finally, before I end, I would like to thank all my team here who have put the effort in organizing this program. Mr. Robinson Karkumar for his endless support, Isabella and team for the welcome song this morning, Lam and Banchan for their capturing each and every precious moment of the day, uh, and last but not the least, the guard, security guard who have, you know, uh, put everything on security. Uh, so with that, once again, I would thank every one of you for your contribution who had made this first day a successful. Thank you.